Hang on, that was quick. Hello, I'm Eagle. Eagle Gardens. Eagle Gardens 1 on Instagram. And this is, this is the wormhole. What's up, Smiley? How you doing? Good, man. Just fucking talking shit with Eagle in the wormhole, man. Monday night. Man, it seems like it's been forever since I've got to chat with you. <laughs> yeah, it's been a few days. It's good, man. You had a good weekend? Um, I think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Fucking days go good, by man. so fast here. anymore, man. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. As long as there isn't no bad notes there, I guess it was all good, right? <laughs> yes, sir. That is the way it goes. I'm rolling up some uh, Skywalker right now. Well, I'm gonna bring up chat a minute. That's what I'm doing as well. There you go, Robert Hazelton, GMO. What's up, Just Stevenson? Just Stevenson. What's up? Joe Y, Chase Knifestone, CJ Apple, Day Blaze Daily. What's up, guys? What's up, Jeff? All right, now I need my tray. I definitely need my tray. I'm all muted. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> man, I was so close to finishing my tile job today. Feet. Square feet. I fucking was grouting today. They bought one bag of grout, and I stretched that shit just as far as I could fucking stretch it. And I know that shit's special order. I know that shit's special order. Yeah, that's not fun, man. Special. Oh, no, everything's yeah. been special so far well i don't and that that's a that's a shitty term to be honest with you because what was common stock two years ago is now special order because nobody you know, really you know shelves anything anymore you know they have it in their catalog but they can order it for you but technically almost anything you look at in that market is almost special order anymore because nobody's sitting on uh, I'm on the inventory. That's wild. I did take yeah, a little video you want to see. What's that? Ah. So I did take a little video you want to see. Yeah, sure. I had to show it to you on my phone. I'll think. Uh, the stupid Samsung, man. I got a, this is a 20 that I, I this is the, my, the one I like the best anyway. And uh, so this thing's been a great phone other than at one point it fucking, uh, it just stopped working or the, at one point it just started just telling me that, uh, that the fucking, the charger wouldn't work. It was wet and it never got wet. And for like the longest time, it was like that. I bought a wireless charger and said, fuck it. Just started charging it wirelessly. One time after an update, it started working again. Now out of the blue, I can't plug it in anymore. Same fucking thing. I should have taken it. I think it's on my other phone. The fucking, uh, the before, which was before. So if you could see that terribly, man, when I ripped that out and that window had a leak, that fucking wall was gone. Gone, smiley. Here, let me turn off this light. You probably won't see it. By the there you go. There you go. You can see it. That wall was gone. So I went back in. I re you know, fucking sistered some studs up, secured that wall up as best as I could before I closed her back up. Of course, of course, re-insulated everything. Good. Very nice. And then, uh, here you go. That's that's when I left today, if you can see that. Oh, yeah. 
That's the window in the shower. That is a weird window. <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. It's a project. I got to do something similar. I got to redo mine, my shower, bathroom area. That'd Never be fun. fun one. No, it's the only bathroom. Second most house, expensive. Though. Second most expensive uh, uh, room in the house, right there, the bathroom. Really? Mm hmm. Kitchen's first. Huh. Uh, I suppose that's where all your shit's at, right? Cabinets or cabinets can be quite expensive. 420 says, do a factory said that you've been hacked. I bet I've been hacked, to be honest with you. I'm throwing up some uh, primal punch, and of course, I'm throwing in some uh, some bubble. Yeah, some bubble in there. Uh, <laughs> you still got quite a bit left of the bubble, or what? Nah, I'm getting down to the the teeth in the jar. <laughs> it was full. That was only like a week ago, though, wasn't it? There's that two weeks. Seems now. like. No, that was the last time I made hash. That was that was a minute ago. Was it? When it was. I yeah. huh. <laughs> see time bus blows by my. Chat crazy. Cheers, everybody in chat. Yeah. Rolling, I ain't doing any uh, joints and shit. <laughs> yeah, right. Like it on the end, just roll some joints. <laughs> hey, you know, it's my be, be past time. So what do you do? That'd be a good morning show right there, basically. The morning wake and bake, just sit there and just roll up the daily fucking 20 joints and fucking hey guys, I'm out. <laughs> I don't sit and roll them all. Just, I just do it as I get time and like, a, like I just fill my grinder and it's like four or five joints. You know what I'm saying? So like, I don't know if I want a couple different kinds, I'll ha end up with ten joints. And you know, what's up, Bingus? That's a good day. Thought <laughs> I jump on, say hi to y'all. How you doing? Good man. Have Here's a good weekend. Famous. Oh yeah, I'm busy all the time. Trying to improve my garden, got the new light in, and that was kind of an ordeal hanging it, but had to rehang my brackets and just, you know, your standard stuff that you think is going to be easy. And then, <laughs> all right, get the fuel belt on, let's fucking go to work, you know. <laughs> now you got to buy a light meter so you can set the right height on your LED light. Exactly. Cheers, chat. How you doing? Thanks for joining everybody and saying hi to me. Appreciate it. Hi. How you doing, Eagle? He's doing I'd be better if I would talk to you unmuted. I'm getting Other good. than that, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> you can get good at reading lips on the Eagle channel. <laughs> <laughs> it helps. It helps. Right on. Yeah. So what conspiracy are we going to talk about today, Bingus? <laughs> no, man, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> no, that's what, that's what I was trying to do. I <laughs> know. Yeah, no, no <laughs> man, I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I have nothing to say, really. I mean, it's still there. Things are still kind of strange out there in the world. Yeah. I don't know, man. I'm not. I'm just staying in the garden and staying busy, really. That's what I try to do is uh, I don't give my time, myself time to wander too far into the rabbit hole. The wormhole is good enough, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's pretty. But yeah, you know, it's fun. 
keep growing cannabis. Got had some good guests lately. Uh, always enjoy sitting back, trimming, and listening. And uh, so I didn't say anything last night. I think it was what? I think it was during the wormhole that uh, we had a past guest pop back in yesterday and was being somewhat polite. But the mystery episode guest was in chat last night. I was actually staggered by it a little bit. I was like, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> really? That's really? cool, though. That's really, really cool, I think. Dude, I. Dude, I I hold no grudges with anybody. I mean, dude, I've made so many mistakes in my life. Um, and people have held grudges against me. And it's just really not worth doing, you know. That type of energy is nothing but detrimental to your health. And, uh, <clears throat> things happen, in my opinion, for a reason, <laughs> okay? And uh, determining what that might be is all the fun, really. I mean, I learn every day uh, by screwing shit up. If I'm not screwing shit up, I'm really not doing anything. And like I said, hanging that light should have been easy if I would have thought it out. But no, I want to rush it, get it done, you know. So shortcuts never work. <laughs> right? Might as well just do it right the first time. So I did. Took all day, sat down, smoked a couple bowls, mapped it out on paper, like like it was some huge project, right? Which it isn't. <laughs> but it sure went a lot smoother. You know what I mean? <laughs> when, you, when you do that kind of stuff. What tools am I gonna need? What do I need? What what do I gotta move? Where's my level? You know. Shit like that. It's nothing worse than getting into a project and you need a tool and you can't remember where the fuck you put it. You know. Man, that happened what yesterday? Yesterday, I grabbed a fucking tote that had uh, several saws, grout tools, because I'm like fucking working on a couple vehicles. It seems like now and fucking. So I grabbed a bag out of one. I'm like, there's the diamond inch and a quarter whole saw bill that I'm going to fucking need. I, that's the only reason I grabbed the bag. I drive around the fucking lake that's like fucking 40 minutes. 40 minutes! I get around, around the shower to the fucking the faucet there and go to fucking drill a hole. And <laughs> empty. I emptied the bag out on the ground basically. I'm like, I know I seen that son of a bitch in there. And at that point, it was actually cheaper to just go buy one than it was <laughs> to, you know, take the, the half hour or 40 minutes and head back home to try to dig through my shit to find the bed. It was just cheaper to go buy one at that point. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be irritating. <laughs> irritating. I have many replica, replica tools at times, especially the small ones. And I find them, like I buy a new one <laughs> Like I'll lose one, buy a new one, then come home and find the old one. Like what the fuck, you know? Just stupid human stuff. Stoner. Stuff. You always find the old one after you bought the new one, though. Yeah, oh, I, always. <laughs> it doesn't matter how long you look before you buy the new one. You will find that motherfucker after you bought it. Yeah. <laughs> That's Murphy right there. That's funny. So that's fine. I think when you grow cannabis, you almost have to be somewhat of a do-it-yourself or, or at least inclined to tinker with shit a little bit. Hey, you got to be a plumber, HVAC guy, a carpenter, electrician. Let alone know how to put water in a pot plant, you know? I mean, it's, it's great. People say... Lighting expert, soil biological expert, a fucking botanist, a horticulturalist. Oh. <laughs> an agronomist. <laughs> that was a good word I learned. Yeah, and then a and then a um a drying expert, a fucking curing expert, a trimming expert, and then the best salesman around. Yeah, you have to learn how to make videos about it all. What the fuck? Right. 
<laughs> it's like you're a studio photographer as well. It's interesting. Definitely keeps things going. <laughs> Who wouldn't um, have it spread way? pretty thin? <laughs> yeah, well, Smiley, I think you're gonna be proud of me. I might actually hang the Tahoe over. I was gonna fucking, I was gonna fix it myself. But if I fix it myself, I'm only gonna do that one fucking line. I'm only gonna do the one line. You gotta do them right, man. Brake lines suck. Uh, I know. To get them right. Come I on. I talked to a cat today. I knew, I knew everything he was telling me. He's like, "You're gonna change that line, and then the other ones are gonna blow." I'm like, "I know. I, you're probably right." As soon as get- I pump them up, they're probably. Hey, he's like. Bring it in. I'll get the kit, man. Everything will be stainless steel. Five hundred bucks. Three three fifty five. So if you can stay closer to three fifty, we get a pretty good deal. I'm in. I like it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, actually. <laughs> you know what I got to say about cars? Car wars, the continuing saga. It just never ends. Especially when I buy buy throwaway models. I don't buy new cars. And I run them till the wheels fall off. Then I sign the title and leave them on the side of the road somewhere. <laughs> I don't do that actually, but I have a 2004 or five, I, I don't know, Honda Accord. Runs great. Looks a little, it's not a flashy car. Kind of needs a paint job, you know? But shit. Like to find, like to find me a, like an older four-cylinder, uh, pickup, little, run-around pickup truck. You should be able to pick those up for like a thousand bucks. Now they're nowhere near that. <laughs> no, I know. I was looking at trucks too. It's insane what they get for them damn things. Like brand new ones, yeah, sixty-five, seventy grand on some of that shit. I was like, what? I'm not buying a house here. I mean, come on. Right. <laughs> so I don't know. But then again, everything's delivered. So fuck it. That's the other. That's why I weaseled out of that one. In a know. delivered? Well, like I used to go to Lowe's in some places. Like I'd go to Lowe's and buy Perlite, for example. And uh, fucking ordeal, especially nowadays. <clears throat> they won't know. Half the people don't know where things are. I mean, it's crazy. Then I wipe them out and then they get pissy with me. <laughs> I'm like, no, you took all the perlite. I'm like, isn't that the idea? You know what I mean? Right. And so now I just order it online and they deliver it for free. So I used to order like 20, 30 bags. And now they're like, now you can only order 10. So now I order three orders. Of <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? You know, you're still sending me the same as, you know, but no, this order, you can only order 10. Okay. Silly rules. So I just place that order and I go right back and get another 10, place that order, get another 10, place. You know, you just make it a little harder for me. You're still doing the same job. All, All right. the boxes show up on the same day. So it's like, what the fuck? I don't know. I was doing that with the peat moss through uh, the True Value store. But they didn't even stock it, Bingus. They wouldn't stock. They didn't even stock it. So I was going online, and the the price on it was like half of what you could find it for anywhere. I think it was like eighteen bucks or something for the big three point eight cubic feet. And then it was free shipping to the store. Like you can find them for twenty bucks online, but then they want to hit you another thirty bucks to ship the fucker, you know. So it's still fifty bucks for the bail, you know. So it's like, yeah, it was like it was the score, but now. Ever since COVID, they're not doing that or whatever online. It says not an option, no longer shipping to store or whatever. So apparently they didn't like that that setup either. You know, I, I, I don't know, man. Things are strange. You adjust, you know what I mean? You adjust your patterns, what you do, how you get stuff. Um, it's funny. <laughs> Anyway, how's you got? How's your garden doing? 
I mean, I see, I already seen how smiley's. How about your garden? How your garden doing there, Eagle? I don't see any updates from it's you. Pretty it. good. I don't update anymore. I don't update anymore. I don't do that right. shit. You don't spend enough time on YouTube, Eagle. You got to do more videos. Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Actually, I was getting ready to roll over uh, the biggest mile. She's going to go into flower, and I, as soon as I strap her down again. Right on. Right on. I think you'll be, pre I think you'll be happy. Yeah, I'm, dude, I'm happy. Anybody who grows my shit, I'm happy. Right? He's got them in soil now, too. Oh. I love those buckets, man. Those are just like primo buckets. Look at that bush. Holy shit. Yeah, no kidding. <clears throat> Huh. Never last time I know, strap her down again. Damn, that's should be a good, you know, uh, good at least from tip to hit tip here should be, you know, a good thirty-two to thirty-six inches. That's great. Awesome. So, as she, as you can see, she's got a bunch of nice little yeah. branches shooting up, so she's gonna bush right out. She's gonna, she's gonna be a nice looking girl. Dude, they it will bush to begin with, and so doing that, I've never, dude, I, I'm loving it because nobody's ever done that to this particular strain, and it's a vigorous strain, so I'm hoping that uh, it'll just uh, be awesome. I, dude, I'm smoking some blue mile right now. I'm kind of tired of it, I'll be honest, because I'm, I'm, I'm done pheno hunting. And I picked the one. I was gonna keep three. No, I'm keeping one, and I got a ton of seeds coming. I got too much shit going on, really. So I'm running more seeds now. And the man, the DJ Short Blueberry. Oh my goodness. Definitely going to be running more of that. Smiley's having a cough attack. <laughs> Call the med medic. <laughs> yeah, man. I love growing cannabis. I got the face on fire coming through. Or face, excuse me, face off OG. I have some face on fire seeds as well that I'm going to pop. And the New York City, good. wow, what a beautiful plant that is. And I have one plant that is just marvelous. I'm hoping it's a female. It's a double white cheese. And man, what a, just a gorilla. <laughs> Unbelievable. So I'm, I, dude, I'm very stoked with what I got going on. Just got to keep doing it. Stick with it. You know, that really looks good though, Eagle. Yeah. Fucking uh, beast, the that Tiger King. Let's see if I can spin you around a little bit there. Uh, where's my little... Kind of a little like back into my screen here, kind of look into your tent. Let me see if I can get a better look at it. <laughs> I can let me see. I had a little lens around here yesterday. I don't know what the heck I did with it. You okay, smiley. It's been rain. <laughs> <laughs> Not too often, smiley goes down. We lost you. I'm here. talking on mute too. <laughs> All right, put your glasses on. There you are. Okay. Nice. Yeah, we thought you you went down for the count for a second. It's okay. Oh, no, I just had to go take a leak and get a refill. I thought you were having a coughing attack. I was that, too. I had a hock a loogie, too. Cough the pee right out of you. That's cool. <laughs> I did, too. I'm getting that old now, Vegas. <laughs> I can testify to all those old man fucking problems. Right. Dude, when you get old, man, I was telling my son this today. Um, I like my hands are shot, dude. I've used my hands in the trade so much that they are just shot. I mean, they really are. And my neck screwed up, so I got nerve pain going down into my hands now. So I drop shit, right? And it just fucking really pisses me off man because I'm, I'm i was always really good with my hands very good okay tools drop shit i'll grab like a 
The other day, I grabbed a carton of milk. It was a little bit moist. I'm like, fuck. Right? And then, what? Next step, clean up the mess, you know. And banging my shit, spending four hours in the garden or, or working, getting up and down, bending up and down. God, like I'm sore for two fucking days. You know, it's just like, what the hell, man? This, this vehicle is definitely wearing out. You know? So it's just not fun getting older. <clears throat> and I keep listening to some of this futuristic uh, talk about the golden age and how we're going to have med beds that are going to be able to take 30 years off your life. And I'm like, fucking sign me up for that shit, you know. I mean, what do you need? Need weed? Need whatever? You know, you want my right arm? I'll tell, okay. I'll give you an AA arm just to take off thirty years. You know what I mean? I don't know that I want to be thirteen again, though, Bengus. <laughs> I'm not gonna sign up for that shit, dude. If you think about it and know what you know now at thirteen, are you kidding? Oh me? yeah, me running that shit for sure. <laughs> you rule the world. <laughs> anyway, it's crazy. Getting old's not fun. It is not. This last year, I've noticed a big drop in my uh, physical aspects of being human. It's fucked up. Just saying. Happens to the best of us, though, man. Nobody gets... to all you motherfuckers. <laughs> Nobody's getting away from it, dude. That's the reality for all of us. Nobody's getting away from it. Yeah, you bang, like I bang my hand. I do just stupid shit that you when you lose energy. My legs don't work like they used to. I used to be a great runner, good athlete. Now I fucking stumble around sometimes. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, I get on the treadmill to try to keep circulation to my legs and end up in this constant walk to nowhere. I mean, like you're just looking out the window. <laughs> I should get a better treadmill with one of these programs, right? Where it takes you on a, actually takes you somewhere. Even if it is, even if it is virtual, you know. But I'm yeah, cool. I bought a used I, treadmill. <laughs> I used to run on the treadmill every day. I was doing uh, uh, the five k or whatever, like three miles or whatever it was, three and a half miles. And then mm -hmm. I was so yeah. It started out, it was almost an hour, and then fucking got it down to like 35, 40 minutes, something like that. I never broke under thirty. Damn, hours. that's moving, Smiley. No, it that's was moving. not, dude. It what was about six or seven, ain't it? That's like a six or seven miles, mile, dude. It is not moving. It's it's it was moving for me, but it was not moving. I mean, there's guys running them in like eighteen. And well, shit. it's a nice hustle. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're talking about just like extra, you know. That's a nice hustle for a good, you know, a, a daily run. Not yeah. I've uh, I've been on the treadmill for a well, while. Mine broke about a year ago. I never replaced it, but I was on that treadmill kick too, where I was running almost every day. I prefer it. I prefer the treadmill. I've been. I don't. And, and, and nothing against the people that that run, but I just. I didn't want to be. I. I, I like. I'd rather bike. To be honest with you, you know, either ride a bike in the house or outside. Either or, I prefer to bike. I just spindle. easier on your joints. I do have a bike. But I just could never picture myself. I can run on the treadmill for in home for whatever it takes, but I just can't picture myself with that runner's high, you know, passing people down the road. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. Oh, no, I just, I can't see myself falling into that rut there. I just, it's, uh... so it's always been treadmill. You guys talk about running, fuck. I'm just talking walking. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, I don't run anywhere anymore. <laughs> okay, I don't even run to the bathroom if I can't make it. It's whoops. <laughs> it's, it's that kind of shit. But the bike is a better workout. I, I sometimes I don't like the noise that the treadmill makes at times, and it bothers one of my cats, Quentin. He's kind of sensitive. So if he's around, I'll get on the bike. Otherwise, he gives me dirty looks. <laughs> that's dude, that's that's how weird my fucking life is. I have, I'm I'm talking to two cats and taking care of cannabis plants pretty much eighty percent of my life right now. <laughs> oh, 
peaceful. I actually tried the elliptical for a while, man. Fuck the elliptical. I tried that. I used that thing until it broke. And then I was like, yeah, I'm never getting on that fucking thing again. Elliptical. <laughs> elliptical. Yeah, that's where you stand up and it's more like cross country oh, skiing. No, I don't. Sorry. I tried that once too. Uh, you I'm know good. what I'm talking about then. I used to train hard, man, but I'm, I'm talking about lifting weights. I mean, not. Fucking walk on treadmills. And I never used to do any of that. I used to play basketball and fucking that kind of shit to get my cardio. Now it's like, I don't even care if I was a basketball. My hands have really gone to hell. It really pisses me off. I used to be, I was a decent guitar player. I wouldn't say I was excellent, but I could play in a group, you know, you know, I could play. Now, man. I mean, I can play like three chords. It's about it. Can't do any leads. Can't do really anything on the guitar. So I don't play it. It's like, fuck it. <clears throat> if you can't do something good, I mean, I'm kind of have that mindset where like, it's more of a frustration than it is a pleasure. You know? Funny. My son is into uh, that Pokemon Go game. You guys ever heard of that? It's, yeah. it's a it's a crazy game. Man. I, I was watching it. And uh, he's been doing it now for about a year. And he just made the top yesterday. Right? I mean, and it was like he won the gold medal. I mean, he was really stoked about it. And, uh, but now he's like all alone at the top and there's nobody to fucking play with it. And when you do get into a battle, I mean, this guy's like in Japan and just fucking amazingly good. So it's tooth and nail. And I don't know, but he's the uh, he's an ex. Uh, he played poker for for as a profession for 15 years, and uh, he needs that uh, constant, never-ending battle. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, wow. I kind of lost that. I don't really need that anymore. <laughs> I don't need that battle. So I just want to say something here in chat. There's how to grow is say a fourth week in flower in a living soil and has a nitrogen deficiency. Um, the easiest way to address something like that would be like amino acid. Just saying, you water that right in. But boom, bada bing, Nitro, <laughs> nitrogen. May have to do it a couple times, and but I wouldn't go with top dressing a ton of stuff on there at fourth week in flower because I'll send about seventh, eight, eighth week, it's all going to be available. So I would try to spoon feed it that way, so to speak. Or 20. Asked me, did I have a whammy bar on my Gibson? No, I had a Les Paul Custom. I had a Fender. I had a Ibanez with a whammy bar. I had all kinds of guitars, you know, when I when I used to play. But I don't I don't even own a guitar now. I just I'm kind of that way, man. I do something, and I get I try to get it as good as I can, and then it's like. If I, if I can't do it anymore, I'll just move on. Or even if I can, sometimes I'll just move on to something more challenging. And uh, that's why growing cannabis for me is perfect because you're never going to master anything. You know, I mean, you're just, it's a constant lesson. And I, that just fucking keeps me going every day. The problem with poker is. It's not a win-win. You know, I played a lot of poker. We had to play poker at my house when I lived with my two oldest boys. It was like, all right, let's play. We had two tables, <laughs> right? So it'd be like, all right, let's play for who does the dishes. <laughs> That's actually how I got good at playing poker because I got fucking tired of doing the dishes. So I read Super Systems and I started really studying the game. Of course, my son is shit. He's very good, so he would teach me. 
when he wasn't taking my fucking money. You know? Yeah. And, uh, but it's not a win-win. And so I don't, I just don't feel good about it. I mean, I, I don't mind playing nickel die and that's fine. You know what I mean? But to get down and, I mean, when you're like playing, let's say for a $10,000, $20,000 pot, <laughs> you can ruin someone's life. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's just not cool. It, I, you know, the line of thinking there is that they shouldn't have been playing at that table anyway. Well, yeah. Yeah, no, of course, but... <laughs> but it does happen, you're right. No way around. I will say one thing about poker. I don't want to play unless there's something at stake, though. You know what I mean, Bingus? People play different when there's fucking... You know what I mean? When there's meaningful money at stake, I should say. People play different than if it was just everybody threw in five bucks and we got some fucking quarters we're throwing in to call. You know what I mean? Term, tournaments, too. It's different. I mean, there's not... It's boring. I like cash games primarily. <laughs> and with people that I didn't know, hopefully. Yep. Uh, and I could be good. I played online a little bit. But, and you know, you play tournaments and you, you know, you're buying a tournament for 150 bucks or something. And so that's all you're really losing. And it's just basically a fold match. You just fold, fold, fold until. You get a playable hand, and hopefully you're in the right position to do something. You know, it's, it's pretty much anybody can win a tournament, really. But great. What's up, Red? Howdy. What's going on? What's up, We're Red? talking about poker. Yeah. Play poker. I played for eight years, <laughs> man. I, like seriously, played for eight years. And at the end of it, it was right before my divorce, and I had won. I literally won a six. There were six week um, tournaments, and I never finished out of the top three out of any of the six. And I won the turn the seat to the World Series of Poker. I literally fucking come home to my ex, going, "I'm leaving you, fuck you. Need to get out the house, and here's divorce papers and shit." Like I went from that high of a high of winning it to like. Holy shit! You know what I'm saying? What did so smiley? What, that, you, just, what did you do? Play. I couldn't play after that. I was just fucking. Yeah, that's so. Even in the book Superstitions, it says, "Do not play if you're emotionally distraught. Do not play. Do not play when you're drinking. Do not play." He's got a whole list of things that I broke frequently. Yeah. <laughs> What's funny about that is I would say most of the gambling addicts in Vegas are emotionally distressed. <laughs> Dude, that, Don't is, do it. that is a great comedy line, dude. Think about that. You could turn that into a little that's a great one, Red. Think about mm -hmm. that. That's a good one. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, you could write a joke on this one. That was good. <laughs> the, the, that uh, whatever book, that astral realm book that only exists, the ones that, the jokes that I should have written down, you know, there's an entire notebook of things that I should have written down. I think of it like they capitalize on it, right? I screw up all the time. That's why I think about doing comedy because at this point, and especially now, I mean, you'll really get, you'll know when you're over the target, when you get hit. But a lot of people, that, that's a very good avenue for a lot of free thought and freedom of speech, right? And the, the way I think of it is, is almost having copyright claim on your ideas, okay? Okay. So it's a point where, sure, you can turn it into something funny and make a joke out of it, but more, it's, it's mainly more important that you're the one that's, like, responsible for this new thought, you know. That's how you, that's how you establish it. And then you're like, if someone else repeats it, then be like, oh, no, 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 I, I heard so-and-so say that. That's where that idea comes from, you know. That's courtesy. What's up, Ben? 
Good. Hey, what's happening, gentlemen? How's everybody doing tonight? Good, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Wouldn't that be nice? Someone thought about your idea and spoke it. Has to pay you. <laughs> uh, the mind police will come and get you if you don't pay. <laughs> I think they made a movie about that, didn't they? The, the Tom Cruise. Well, what what movie? Sorry. They would come and arrest you for crimes that you were going to commit. What was that? I forget the name of that. It's the Thought Police, basically. Oh, a Minority Report? Thank you. Is that it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There, there's, mo there's, there's multiple ones that you could put that under, but that's the one that, when everyone's thinking of that, that's one that. Like I said, original thought. That's the one that put that original thought out there. Now, the people that wrote that movie, and I always think about this too, like every, everything from like childhood shit, like childhood stuff that had lessons written into it and then like articulated Hollywood theatrical shit that has a message behind it. Those are people I really want to have fucking these conversations with where we're fucking doing dabs and hitting bowls. Those are the kind of people I want to talk to. I like to yeah. talk to Bernays, the guy that talked to Bernays, the guy that basically solidified propaganda. Very, yeah. very. Well, I don't know if he'd be very 420 friendly, but I, <laughs> it, in, in a good setting, it would be cool to have him open up to me like, yeah, this is all just mind control and I'm taking advantage of people big time. You know, like a truth serum type shit. <laughs> Here, doc, smoke this. Then let's have the discussion. Right? That'd be cool. See, there's legitimate, there's legitimate scientific knowledge of how that all fucking works. That's how sales guys like. There's you can go study that shit if you want to be a salesman. You can go study that shit. How to manipulate people, sway people. There's wording, way you, you know what I mean. The way you present things, fucking sway them one way or the other. Or, there's I a can't. psychological art. There's a psychological process in everything that a human does. If you understand that pattern of what that is, you can identify where the person is within that pattern and coax them along the way. Yeah. They, they, won't, know, they won't even know it, dude. Not, a, not even have a clue. They'll walk away thinking you're the best salesman in the world, too. That's the fucking the good ones. That's what they'll they'll sell you everything under the sun, and you walk away being like, "Man, man what a great guy." <clears throat> my my memory is either right on or dead off, but I almost want to say there's a really good documentary, really long. It's either three part or like the whole series. I think it's called like The Mind of Men. Sounds like generic, like there should be thousands of documentaries called it, but I almost want to say that's what it's called. But it goes into that everything like it's like the most in-depth psycho psychological document uh um documentary that documentary sorry that uh i've ever seen <clears throat> it's I, i'm very interested in psychology and humans period and it's so i've studied all that dale carnegie that's another I worked for Dale Carnegie. So, I mean, that's where I think I, I was like, holy fuck, really? Okay, I want to know all of this, right? <clears throat> but uh, again, unless it's a win win deal, I don't like it. I don't like to uh, get into a situation like where you're trying to sell or persuade somebody to get something they don't need or, you, you know what I mean? You don't want to sell the ketchup popsicle to a lady in a white dress? Not cool, right? She don't need it, right? Yeah, she don't fucking need it. I, I want to be more of a, like an advocate. Shout out to Tommy boy. What's up, Tommy? Yeah. So be an advocate for people. That's another thing. Like, like, let's say I'm in cannabis. So let me guide you. Like, 
to the plant that might work best for you. You know what I mean? Instead of, dude, I don't really care what your problem is, but this is the plant you need. Right? No, it's, it's, <clears throat> you know, you want to be, you want to help. It has to be a win-win deal for me anymore. And I, I can identify real quickly when it's not win-win. And I try to stay away from those situations as much as possible. I'm really high. How are you guys doing? Hi, how's your high today? <laughs> Go ahead. Red torches up. For a minute there, I didn't think he was going to be on tonight. Eagle. I was, uh, I was at work. I always, so. It's Monday. Well, I always stagger on late on Monday nights. Monday nights, always the wormhole, always 2 o'clock. That's actually how I'm hour. Let's, let's pull, Well, I say always. That's what it's supposed to be. But sometimes I'm a little late. <laughs> what it's always supposed to be. Right. So, are you, are you uh, going to join the protesting against metric down there? I've seen Brandon Russ was talking about that Sunday, and then he had a little thing on Instagram about it, too. So I'm, I'm working on a uh, outdoor grow, and, and the guy's license, it, uh, or the guy that has the license, he had to go to that metrics class. And I tell you what, I mean, they're going to be implicating it, making it to where if you don't do it, it's a crime. Um, uh, so I don't think I'll be out there protesting that one. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I get it. There's a lot of those things that they are wanting in there um, that are kind of ridiculous. I mean, I don't know. Like, I just defoliated 90 plants today. Technically, I'm supposed to weigh all that uh the, that leaf matter up and weigh it and report that to the state. A lot of people compost their stuff. So if they're composting it, they don't have any waste. So technically, if you don't have any waste, they, they're they going to be cracking down on that. All kinds of weird stuff's about to change uh, here just in the next couple of days. Huh. I just wonder what their concern is about the leaves, the weight of the leaf. Uh, you know what I mean? Like some of that stuff just doesn't make sense to me. Like why I think, why make a minutia of all this data that you have to collect for no apparent reason at all? I think what they're worried about is is it being a nuisance and having um, fiends going through trash trying to collect you know cannabis for leaves. fan leaves. Believe it or not, there's a lot of people that don't that aren't that educated about what part of the planet that that, that you really smoke. Um, a lot of people out here until cannabis really became a thing out here. Nobody had ever seen a plant, let alone, you know, yeah. under, the understanding of it. True that. I just was, I, I just don't, I don't know. I just don't follow the concern there. You know what I mean? Like, Isn't that weird how uh, prohibition held back, like, literally, like, decades and decades of knowledge like that? To the layman, they don't understand that you smoke the flower. Not and, the lead. and even still today, I mean, I, I'm still having to educate people like at these convent, uh, the last uh, uh, couple of it we went to last weekend or the weekend before. Uh, so our law out here says anywhere where you can smoke a cigarette, you can consume cannabis. So there it was allowed to smoke in the building, but then security staff wanted to try to tell me I couldn't smoke my blunt in there. Uh, I was like, are you kidding me? Um, they said, yeah, it's, uh, it's on the pillars out there. And I said, yeah, I know it's on the pillars. I went and I took pictures of it and came back and I showed him. He's like, he's like, well, you, can, you can't smoke flour in here. I'm like, no, that's not how the law works. If you can smoke concentrate, you can smoke flour and you can smoke cigarettes. It's all the goddamn same out here. That's cool. I like that. It should be all the same. I mean, unless it's like, Technically, I could go across the street here to the uh, park, and which I would not do because, I mean, it's just not necessary. But I could go out there with my rig and, you know, blowing smoke clouds all over out there because there is no sign that says no smoking on the park premises. Now, if there's a sign that says that, then now you can't. 
you can't just like just like with the firearm you can ca- open carry out here but there are some places that have signs that says guns are not permitted so you can't bring it in <laughs> you know uh colorado was pretty much exactly like that it's where uh, apartment that i stayed at according to the apartment rules you can't even smoke or do anything with cannabis haven't even can't even have it on you let alone use it as medicine, let alone recreate with it, let alone grow it, because that's the rule that is made up, even though the whole state is recreational. Right? Well, I'm sure that there'll be enough people like Russ Brandon uh, protesting and getting signatures to kind of change <laughs> things. And, and, then it, and there's some things that just like in every state, I mean, they they set their rules and regulations, and every year or so they they do adjustments because there was something that they left out that people are finding loopholes or whatever the heck they want to do, you know. But it my seems argument, like every. Go ahead. Go ahead my bad. I'm sorry. And I was just gonna say it seems like uh, every couple nine to twelve months, you know, things are gonna be changing. Yeah, my argument for that was that, like you said, with the cigarettes. I, I even though the argument didn't work because the laws were already not the laws but the rules were already written on you know white paper but the, I would argue that I can smoke cigarettes in this apartment but I can't smoke weed the the weed I have already is a, a, a medicinal license from the state and you know weed not in my certain case that I was using it for but for a lot of other people, it's case that they use it for is to help uh, prevent cancer from spreading or help try to, you know, cure cancer. So, you know, as a, I would just find it totally ironic that I could sit in my apartment and hot box cigarettes all day that cause cancer. But the way that though they pe- the people there that, you know, made their rules, they're totally against weed, which is the answer to that. So yeah, the, that's just a little tangent about how the, the laws or rules can be in one given space. True that. We got a lot of rules. More and more daily. I, I passed a lot of, you know, there was a lot of people that just came by, whether they were in the same mindset where they were just sick of mundane life and they wanted to get work done with as soon as possible. But I had many inspections like the yearly smoke alarm inspections or the chimney cleaning inspections or the plumbing inspections where they would come in and then they would walk right past my grow tents, not even fucking notice it. But then once in a while, you know, you leave a pipe sitting out and they're like, "Uh, are you smoking in here? You know, that's not allowed. I'm like, hello, lady. There's a fucking grow tent with weed plants sitting right next to you. <laughs> that's good. I like that. No, that's uh, yeah, indoctrinated mindsets. And that was in Colorado, like I'm saying. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> There's all kinds of indoctrination. I mean, that knows. I mean, he's in the military. There's an indoctrinated mindset there. There's you go to different schools. There's indoctrinated mindsets there. They all want to persuade you to think and believe one way or another, you know. It'd be nice if we could just uh, somehow pry away from that type of thinking a little bit. We're almost there in time. Almost. I think so. I, it's Another good time. But Ten years. I, we're going in that direction. Yeah. You know, it's it, once you stabilize the Believe it or not, once we stabilize the financial aspect of things, uh, it takes a huge stress off the slavery aspect of being human. And like I heard a guy today saying that things should go back to 1950 prices. (laughs) Oh, fuck. Really? (laughs) Just imagine if that happened. Wait, the whole world back to 1950 or one aspect of it? Let's just say the whole world goes back to a 1950 price 
The only thing I think about that as cool is the automobiles. Well, but I'm just saying, how much more money would you have? You see what I mean? You're dropping the cost of everything down like shit. <sighs> you know what I mean? And so now you have you don't have that stress of having to make up for that 80% to survive, to buy shit, to buy that car. I mean, I remember my my car that I loved when I was 17 years old. I walked by it every day. It was uh, $2,900. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just like, today I'm like, fuck, I could go, you know, go down and buy that right now, but it's not. 40, 50 years ago, the cars that you would buy for $3,000, those cars now are worth seventy, ninety thousand dollars 90000 yeah, that's my point. So the stress of coming up with 90 versus, you see what I'm saying? It's, it would take all well, of the pressure from people. Unless, unless you already are on a good path that uh, you can pay for it in one less than one year's salary, those kind of cars where someone could pay for, Yeah, you can't even afford in one year's salary, the, the average person. Right. They almost are totally... Like we said, like we're saying, like you make it a class thing. Yeah. After a certain point, you know, it, it, there used to be a lot of things more promised to you, you know, committing your whole life to a career, you know, from uh, early adulthood into retirement. You would get so much more for that commitment. You know, back then you could do that. You could be able for, and, and, you know, those cars were bigger too, more real estate. You can fit like four adults and like four children in those cars, right? Uh, and, and they were, like I said, the amount of money to where you can afford, you can easily afford with, with your, with everyone's average job that they had, anything from like teaching to factory working, they're able to afford that family car and just a year's salary yeah, to now, if you want to be a, just a little bit upscale, you know, I mean, there's those cheap companies, there's more than tons of them to name, but if you want to just be a little bit more upscale, it's almost out of your class. You know, you're, you're going to have to work years to be able to afford that car. <laughs> Which you said the key word. That hard. was the case. That was the case even back in the day with the three thousand dollar car. There were people that couldn't afford them then, and you know what I'm saying. So yeah, I mean we had a bigger middle class is the point you're making there, and less mm -hmm. inflation. You know now we have more inflation and less of a middle class, and that's where the gap is that you're talking about. The inflation comes though because they're just printing fucking money. You know? If you're, if you're, yeah. let's say you're making X in today's standard, and then you drop to 1950 prices, you're still making 2021 prices or wages, but the price of everything drops down to 1950. Now, <laughs> everything's a lot more affordable, you see, because you have the money to make it happen, right? Mm -hmm. The high inflation is happening today and what are those jobs what are those jobs to compensate for that you know what i mean right now how much do you have to get paid for you to live life like it's 1950 exactly a lot yeah <laughs> a lot all right you're gonna not, not you're not gonna, even if you got paid 15 dollars if they up to the minimum wage to Fifteen dollars, and you got fifteen dollars per hour at working McDonald's. That is it's still not cutting the fucking cake there at the end. Here, let's see. I my first job, I made fifty cents an hour. Okay, nineteen sixty-eight, and I made a dollar an hour if I stayed and did maintenance. All right, which I worked at a car wash. I was underage. <laughs> you had to be 14. I think I was 12 or something like that. I don't know. I definitely lied about my age. But I'm saying, <clears throat> you. so, but let's say today, I'd be making probably 18 bucks an hour. You see what I'm saying? And if the prices were the same as back then, dude, definitely a one, 
a man could run a, a household where, you know, back then, you know, my dad worked and my stepmom stayed at home and, you know, everything today is two people work. Hell, you can't even have most single families. You need, almost need a border, <laughs> you know, or a roommate. Well, the, the, uh, we can do a rudimentary, uh, increase on you know when our currency currency was founded into how much uh silver is worth right i know you did a you're like I said you, you've been studying up on federal reserve and stuff like that lately so where a dollar used to buy you an ounce one not even federal reserve no one u.s uh note you know one u.s bank reserve you know currency reserve note or a dollar bill that actual, you know, by the technical monetary term, dollar bill. It's not a Federal Reserve note. It's a dollar bill. That used to buy you an ounce of silver. I don't know what the current exchange is now, but it costs more than, I think, $19. 19 Federal Reserve notes to pay for that same ounce of silver. So whatever that money was worth in... 1912, 1913, it's 18 times is uh, more than that, actually. Remained down. I think you're talking about silver certificates. Is that what you're talking about? Or the uh, well, just what what they fixed silver. the dollar. Like the actual definition of a dollar is based on a silver dollar, and that's based on an ounce of silver, and that whole, you know, the the where our currency is valued. When you have a value basically you have inflation is very hard to obtain because you have value right if you have gold or silver back in your currency we tried to switch over to a silver i think back when kennedy was in power and they killed, uh, they killed if him. someone's out there listening that knows a little bit more but i'm pretty sure like the actual term dollar is very specific to an actual silver dollar that's where the term is derived from because yeah. before currency notes or you know paper notes it was only coinage that was traded and the, the one ounce silver coin was the most commonly used coin in circulation that's where the term dollar comes from and then that's like a fixed thing like a dollar I think is a fixed thing so it, it fluctuates in between time where one federal reserve note will get you or say either 19 up to 25, you know, fluctuating uh, Federal Reserve notes will buy you one ounce of silver, but that's never changed. The amount of money that you'll get for an ounce of silver is only dictated on how much a dollar is worth, right? Well, that like how the world reserve currency? No, that's I'm, not I'm that. getting, That's not correct. No, I, look, it, it, it used to be that uh, when we had a values-backed system, instead of a fiat currency system that we have now, mm -hmm. the, the notes were dollars. Okay, They weren't Federal Reserve notes. We don't even have dollars. They're more like, they, we refer to them as dollars, but it's a Federal Reserve IOU is what it is. Okay, now we had dollars, paper, but that was only because it got to be hard carrying around those beautiful silver dollars that you're talking about, or mm -hmm. the smaller gold ones, which are worth 20, I think, $20 gold pieces, I, I think, all right? But once we went off that, and we it, they slowly dripped us off that system to the fiat system to where we went fully onto the fiat system in 71 with Richard, I'm not a correct, Nixon. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the graph of inflation, that's when inflation started going up. Because, the, right? But the key, what America did is they got the world to adopt the dollar as the main currency. World reserve currency. Yeah, see? And it was based on the petroleum, right? And that's why we're in this sticky wicket uh, and they're fighting to keep the fiat system and the white hats, of course, are fighting to bring us back to a 
valued backed currency. And that's why I'm saying once we get back to value, inflation will balance out. You see, because you're not you're not you've got. Well, actual value. If you think about it, then like, say, yeah, if, if, uh, if well, that's the equation that I tried saying is you figure that out right now. I don't know what the price of silver is. Oh, dude. But you see, here's, OK, I know what you're saying now, because that that would drive the price of gold up to like so twenty thousand twenty six thousand. Yeah, thank okay, you. Okay, so so right now, thank you, Eagle. If you could go into the bank <coughs> and get take a, do, a dollar bill slash Federal Reserve now, trade that in because it's backed by metal, you know, precious metal. You get twenty six dollars for that, or you get one ounce of silver, let's say. So that's basically like I said. I, I I'm too high right now to do the mathematical of how much. If if a if a gallon of milk cost uh, one dollar, divide that by twenty six. What would that be? Four cents, around four cents. So right right now, that would change it to where a gallon of milk. If it, a gallon of milk today saying, yeah, is one dollar, yeah. if our currency was backed with silver, it would only cost us four cents. It, it's it, because see what you're doing. That what you just said is it balances out mm -hmm. the. the Okay, so, but also you can't really, we can't really say that, I mean, to bring it back, right, because we printed all this money, right? So we have to bring the value of that money up to the amount of gold that we have or silver or value to back it. And that's where people come up with these like 10,000, 20, $30,000 prices on gold. However, if we do it correctly, in my humble opinion, based on what I've been researching, those that have stolen from us within our country, if they give back all the money, it will offset that <laughs> consider considerably. Absolutely, it would. But good luck with that. Well, it's it it can it's all digital now. So I mean, if you're that's if, what I was going to say is that's who's making out is what you just mm -hmm. you just highlighted who's who's making out in all this printing of money. You but know. Those are the crooks in my, and again, but that's who's making out when we just keep. They, also, a, they also account that money being like even past trillions, right? That's in the quadrillion. Probably. Yeah. It's, right. But if, if <laughs> let's say that they do, uh, let's, they, let's say they get caught somehow for stealing. Because that's what they're doing. They, they're thievery. The Absolutely. Yeah. So let's see if they get cut. Penalty? No, we're not going to kill you. We're going to put you on, you know, we're going to put you on the news or whatever, but you're going to give all the money back. Hmm. Well, you can't do that. Yes, we can. Click that computer button over there and get it back over here. You're done. Have a nice day. I mean, it's that, it, it will be, I think, that simple. But to make those types of changes, I mean, the world's like, I mean, visualize like, a huge battleship, all right? You can't just grab the wheel and go, let's, let's make a quick right hand turn. No, it, dude, it takes lots of many turns to get it to go any fucking way, right? So it's people, we, we're in this society nowadays where we expect things to happen now. This type of shit, I mean, it's been going south for so long Believe me, it's going to take a long time for it to go north. So just be patient. And this discussion actually goes back to Lincoln's day. Yes, it is. Uh, 1776, my friend. That's where it goes back. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. When the Republic was established, when we had constitutional law. Yeah, where you could pay your taxes. Uh, no, because the dollar bill wasn't established then. There were there were other means that they were trading and doing things, and the dollar bills started coming about when they had inter. The, each state started having like their own dollar yeah, yeah. bills, and then they wanted one national one. It was the complete that's, opposite of central banking. Yes, but that's when the central banking and the Federal Reserve was established, and and they were like the greenbacks were out there, and that's what Lincoln was pushing was the greenback because it was actually a government issued 
form of currency you know what i'm saying it versus the other and and that actually lost out i think it was andrew jackson that fucking made all that go the federal reserve way something like that it would be good if we could learn the proper history of, of this country i mean that's why people like that and many other people that i know have served <laughs> so that we can enjoy the republic I think that's um, a big problem, though, like what you just said there, Bingus. I mean, where did we all learn our history initially? Yeah, we were taught it. We were taught it in school. And, and who controls what history gets taught in schools? The National Historical yeah. Society. And who you, you don't even want to know what kind started of started the National Historical <laughs> Society. The fucking the people that got all the money, man. The, um, I'm drawing a blank on the name now, but. Rockefellers and all them actually they started the fucking National Historic Society. They choose what we get taught. That's that's the, how deep it goes, and they've been doing that for decades. They choose what we get taught in school, and they choose and what we wanna, see on TV. Where it's why it's called programming. Wanna, programming. There, that's exactly probably, what they're doing to you. Is they're programming you? There's probably people that have taken it way more in depth in a later date, but the person that probably gets the most credit for that is Charlotte Iserby. And her book that she wrote was Deliberate Dumbing Down of America. And her father was a Skull and Bones member. Oh yeah. Okay, so it's a straight up like like a game plan, you know, play by play setup of how they wanted to, fi- you know, fix the educational setups to literally literally like said the title dumbing down like it's to del- deliberately like they literally <laughs> or we're crap what, what do we get open. taught about money in school and do you guys ever remember getting taught about yeah. like balance in a checkbook about currency in general do you i mean you know what i'm saying like what wouldn't that be kind of basic knowledge everybody should have right like yeah saying yeah. No, they want you get indoctrinated, man, into the system. It's period. I mean, gee, I, I don't know, man. At some point, I understand what that they say and like the Freemason sense of it, and they're the architects of society, and it's necessary for them to do that to program the next generation and keep the cogs and the wheels continuing and keep and infrastructure and society keep running. Yeah. That, that's what they think they're doing they, that they think that they're the you know uh puppeteers of society and they're they're putting systems in play that control everything else that dictates all the uh functions of society yep. that's the way i've learned to understand it is look from the top down not from the bottom up okay and once you start thinking in that direction the information magically will start arriving for you to read if you cruise the internet with that type of a mindset. So it's there. You know, go ahead, Eagle. Just, I just wanted to uh, just interject, interject and pause the conversation for a minute so I can get back to work. Uh, if you remember this girl, you guys, I believe Bingus and Smiley were here. Let me put down there. Remember that girl? Uh, that girl was like tall and lanky. And I pulled her apart as I buried her. Remember? Oh. I buried her down deep and then I pulled her, I spread her apart as I buried her. And now I have pulled her down once. But as you can see, that, that scraggly bitch filled right out. So That's now I'm going to pull these down. Ready for flower. That's dude, that's that's tet growing at its finest, right there. Just want a little update. That's all. I'm getting back to work now. Good job, man. (laughs) What 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 I was gonna mention uh real fast is Bingus, uh our friend Dead Cynic. I think it was yesterday. I, I I lose track of hours, not so much like I have the weed sense of it, bad short term memory. He had that fucking 24 hours to week memory. I'm almost certain it was yesterday. 
he had a uh, live stream that he did all about like supernatural or paranormal subjects. And I, I really like where he comes from on that point of view, right? So, you know, research wise, it's almost like we're, you know, listening to all the same, you know. It, well, that's just it. When, once you start going in that direction, you're going to come. It's like spokes in a wheel. You end up at the same spot. Right. You just come from different directions. Depends on where you are and what you need. That's why I say start looking from the top down and imagine if you had to uh, manage eight billion humans. Start there. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I, 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 we, I can go even further into depth with that, like <laughs> saying, like for every instance, why I believe it. But we said looking top down, and you want to visualize it as what's actually on that dollar bill of ours, yeah. that damn pyramid with the all-seeing eye. What does that symbolize? That's what that symbolizes. <laughs> it's looking top down from the top of the pyramid down. Right. And who can do that? It's the supernatural spiritual beings that aren't bound to physical space and time. I heard an interesting story because I, I've studied the Bible. I don't know if anybody's, I don't really, it's called the Bible, but it's really a, uh, one of the greatest epics that's been written. Uh, in our time and there's the story of Adam and Eve right where <laughs> they're in the garden frolicking and having fun and <clears throat> the snake comes along and says hey check this apple out and Eve gives it to Adam and kind of gets the blame right and God comes in and says what the fuck did you do and Adam's like oh shit God's talking to me and uh but I think what really, that, that story, <clears throat> first of all, <clears throat> they weren't that old, number one. They were just new beings in the garden, right? And they were given, they knew what to do. And then God says, don't eat from these trees. And then supposedly like the next day, they're eating from the tree. I mean, something, you know, what's something's up. Right. So I'm thinking it's more like God said, don't eat from the tree. Eve was like, how come he didn't talk to me? You know, I mean, he's talking to you, but he didn't talk to me. I know what he wants, Adam. He wants us to eat from the tree. Right. And uh, well, how do you know that? Well, the snake told me that that's what he wants. He wants you to eat from the tree then we'll be like him and be able to experience the lower dimensionality and so right it happens you, you've had the, the the very first experience that people are chasing with psychedelics or out-of-body experiences or seances or sleep paralysis or uh, uh shamanistic type practices or meditation, you know, yoga, kundalini yoga, and all that stuff. There's so many different avenues to get to that. That's what people the knowledge of good. I, I just people. think it's that they wanted, he wanted them to eat from the tree of life or take the mushrooms or whatever, right? So that you would drop to the lowest dimension because they I weren't in, they weren't in the 3D then, they were in a higher dimension. They want he wanted to bring the light, to bring the love to the well, lowest. That's where that conversation led to, and it led to common experiences that people have had. Yeah. And he was talking about sp being spiritually attacked. And when you're on that plane, you're exposed to that, or you're vulnerable to that. To where you're here, you might have, you might have, you know, f some protection if you have, you know, uh, like a relationship. Like what we're what we're talking about if this is all familiar territory to what you're used to and stuff that you already believe you're more likely to be more protected here on this realm and then when you go outside of that realm when you try to uh, explore 
that's when you're more vulnerable to those kind of spiritual attacks. And they could be anything. They could be like night terror torments. It can be like schizophrenic voices here in your head or to, to where me, where I, when I smoked salvia and I went outside of my body, I left, I pe literally peeled off of 3D. Like I, I came out of 3D, came to what I would describe as 4D to where that 3D, the realm that I just came out of, all of a sudden was like a 2D projection. And I'm floating around in third dimensional, just white space, you know, like an infinite, you know, infinity room. And the, the place that I fell out of or came out of was now to me uh, recognizable in a 2D like Polaroid picture of what the realm actually was. And as I'm like looking around, like looking in this white space, trying to like make sense of it, I started seeing shit. And I, and I told Cynic that I like, I, saw, I literally saw like things firing arrows at me, like bow and arrow, like fling firing arrows at me. Gerbs? <laughs> I, I don't know what they were, but that, that's the whole thing of being attacked. Is you, the certain entities don't like that you just snuck up into their dimension and you're all of a sudden snooping around, you know, and they'd automatically try to oust you right, right from that territory. But I'm going to go into more of a sp spiritual thing. And I, like I said, I think that's because I had no business in being there. To where I think like we could name certain people, historical people, anyone from like Elon Musk to Hitler to Aleister Crowley to Genghis Khan, you know, like a whole bunch of different people, right? I think they had different experiences. They're the ones that you hear people trying to go to the Amazon and do ayahuasca to try to, to get hold of. But right, okay. what, I, what I'm trying to get at is, I think Eve is responsible, all right? The responsible one, all right? That convinced them both to come to the lower dimension to bring light, okay? Instead of being blamed for it, I think she instigated it in the right way. Well, well, I do see what you're saying. And I would say then Joe Rogan is Eve. Because Joe Rogan influenced millions of people to smoke DMT. I think it all speaks to to the basis of our human nature to begin with. And if you think of it, woman's gonna say, "Look, man, you're not complete. You need something, yeah. something more." And and the guy, if you think of it, when God instantly said, "Adam, what you do?" He right away blamed Eve. That was the first thing he did. Is like, "Well, she did it, and you created her for me." Those were the two blames that Adam put was that she made me do it and you you made her for me. So he blamed everybody else for what he had done. And that's the speak to our human nature right there at the basis of it. Like, I, I don't know. I think that's where I'd a lot be of right on target yeah. because that's that adds that responsibility. You see what I'm saying? And accountability that we lack so dearly today. I mean, we really do. But that's why we're here is to bring and yeah, I mean, here's the other thing. He was in such adoration of God actually talking to him. He was just like, uh, you know, I mean, in a day with God and talked with him every day. All right. But we were under the realization of the shame of what they had done, because after they ate, they became aware, instantly aware of like. You know, of, of the new, they were naked. They they instantly became aware they were naked. That's why they were hiding. And God was like, "Why are you trying to hide? Like, who told you you were naked? You know what I mean? Like, that's where some of those realities came about. We, you know, like the the knowledge of good. Keep it, in my opinion, is it's actually just the knowledge of how to take advantage of another human being, and 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 the knowledge of our own weaknesses. And then how we can exploit those weaknesses in other people because we're all have those same weaknesses, you know what I, I mean? I, I isn't think it, there isn't is more, a... isn't it more like God was saying, Look at don't eat, look at guys, I love you guys in the garden. I know I need you to go to the third dimension to help bring the light, but mm -hmm. I really don't want you to have to have that type of pain in your life. So please don't eat from the tree of life. Okay, please don't do that, right? Because if you do, then you're going to work and have the sweat on your brow. You're going to have 
you know, menstrual periods. But the knowledge of good and evil is where we've got our free will. It's just that's like, the point. it's just like a, a wolf doesn't think of itself as running around naked. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's where we got our free will. We got our knowledge. God, of that's what that. God wanted was for them to eat the apple. Isn't that really what he wanted? I mean, to me, it'd be like, you so, know, I, I don't want you to, but I need you to. What, so, what I think is the there's fight. still a there's still a physical gap in between that realm and the spirit realm to where like you need that fruit you need to eat from that tree you need to eat a mushroom you need to smoke dmt you need to lay in a fucking coffin and have people do a seance around you or you need to sacrifice children to idols and that kind of I, shit i'm not saying i know i'm just saying that to me if i'm if i'm in an um, you know if i'm god let's say and I need them to go because, dude, the, there we came here to the third dimension to bring the love, to bring the light, basically. In the beginning, probably wasn't so fucking easy because there wasn't that many of us. Okay, now there's way too many, and it seems to me Lucifer's in charge. So you know? what I'm what I'm saying is, the people that get the direct access to, you know, the people, the spirit. They go and find the people that they want to talk to. They're trying to, that are knocking on the door, so to speak, right? And I would make a case realms, that basically, the higher realms, right? That that I would say that that's directly responsible to every progress in technology that we've had, at least in the last five hundred years or more. Like, everyone that you do the research in, like from Isaac Newton to Charles Darwin, Nikola Tesla, they were directly tapped into the occult. And I like totally Nikola, totally agree. But see, we don't know. They indoctrinate that out of us. They don't want us to know how to use the the human body, the human vessel, the human instrument in a in a I, multi-dimensional. I, I don't thing. know if that's a good thing though, because like I'm saying, the spirits what they ask for isn't a, a good trade-off. They get us to destroy ourselves or make our lives miserable. Like I said, we don't have the instructions on how to do it properly. All right. If we did, why else would we have the capability to do it? All right. It's just that we they block the information on how to do it properly, how to protect yourself, how not to get attacked by the negative forces and yeah and then go into that realm and bring back the things that you already know you've mm -hmm. probably already experienced in other lifetimes it, well, the, the, the person that you can't remember what it is i just i just want to reiterate that the bible does kind of tell you that stuff and that love is that mindset that the bible talks about and that charity and giving to others and forgiving others and all those things kind of put you in that different realm even though it doesn't describe it that way, I'm just saying. Uh, how how to access it properly. Okay. It, it also says we shouldn't be doing any pharmacia or burning herbs or incenses and hot boxing and that kind of shit too. So. <laughs> you crack me up, Red. I really think you should consider the comedian aspect of things. I, I the enjoy the aspect of it. Well, you said you wanted to get on that show, right? Well, it's so hard. It, I'm in a conflict between that show and this realm. I can't, it's two <laughs> different realms. There's one there. It's a total. I, If you're going to be a really good Canadian, uh, Canadian, if you're going to be a really good Canadian, then no. But if you're going to be a really good comedian, you can't take shit seriously. No matter how much shit someone's talking about you, this and that. Oh. You you just got to pass off it. And then for us, I feel like right now I'm in a serious mood. Like I'm in a discussion about intellectual things and I'm trying to be more serious. There's no, I don't have to put a comedic effect on it. And then the opposite is true when I'm doing the comedic effect. Yeah. When, when you're in comedy, you just want to be full into that. You don't want to like break it down to, Oh, I just got too real for a moment. Sorry guys. You know, that kind of thing. Okay. I just so. think intellectual humor, there's a place for it. You know what I mean? There's a place in comedy sure. for for that. Like we could I talk. I don't think this. I can get away with that being an open micer, though, because then you get you, people be like, who do you think you are, Bill Hicks, or something like that? Well, religion, so. of course, and all that is kind of a. Yeah. I'm surprised we've gotten this far, to be honest, without too many rocks being thrown. 
I'm just talking, dude. I just this shit I think about. I don't know. I don't fucking know, man. I think it's great discussions, man. I do. I, I, I think it. about it constantly. Yeah. I've thought about it constantly since I was like 17 years old. Too. I mean, I'm a thinker. Yeah. That's what I do a lot. I spend a lot of time in the garden thinking and and uh, certain. Well, since we were on this things. on this religious aspect, um, what do you guys know about the woman that was there before Eve? Lilith. What? Lilith. Yeah, Lilith. I, all I know that that just goes into detail as much as I know. I just know that there's there's and there's a mother of God too. That's where yeah. the name well, it, it at that fault. I don't know anything. Teach me. Ma, Ma, Madonna. Uh, Lilith was not, not the pop artist, God. but supposedly our Lord, you know, God, that one we don't use the name of is uh, Jehovah. But Jehovah's mom is Madonna. Little, there's a, and the whole other thing is there's other beings, there's angels and other other humans that pre, predate Adam and Eve and all different kind of, I don't know, I'm not an expert on that. I just know that. All I know is what I already just said right there. Yeah, where I, was, where I was going with that is it's kind of like back backpedaling to where we were talking about how we only know what we know from who tells us what that that's what it is. But there's also like, I've read the Bible a lot of, uh, when I was younger and I, I questioned a lot of it, but even, even so, I mean, there's still evidence of, uh, well, there's the stories of Willis, but even with Jesus being, being married and, and having a child, um, that's another one of those things where the, um, whoever was in charge of rewriting or, or, or translating the Bible at the time kind of said what they wanted and left out what they didn't want everybody to know and uh but yeah smiley you're right there's a lot all those higher ups are the ones that kind of control who tells us what you know i, I just want to say there's no legitimacy to that at all so i just want to say i just want to throw that out there if there oh, is you can share that with me but i i i would claim that there is no legitimacy to that story whatsoever. I, 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 Either I'll one. Say this too. i don't know if anyone's ever heard of this but anyone ever heard of new chronology or Anatoly Flamenco. So it's a he's a, a Russian mathematician that tried to do like the math between like certain uh, he tried to figure out like in a, a lunar calendar, you know, pattern certain things that's what got him to go on this thing and he tried to see if it matched up with certain historical dates. And then he found out that this lunar calendar didn't match up with the historical dates to where uh, someone figured out that they plagiarized a couple hundred years in the thing. If you want to study, and he wrote like a, can't from it, it's like a seven book, like 22 different volume series covering almost like every everything in history from like ancient Egypt to ancient Greece to ancient Rome and all that stuff. And it's basically newer, not older. Like a lot of people like to push dates back. Like the pyramids aren't 4,000 years old. They're 30,000 years old. Well, this crazy ass fool says that the pyramids are from the 1700s. That's how new they are. So like if you look up new chronology, that's a whole <laughs> rabbit. Dude, I think you should start reading the chat room. My God, you guys in the chat, fucking mm -hmm. hey, man, keep it up. I'm learning more from y'all than in my little humble brain there's, up here. Believe me, there's a great series on the that uh, on YouTube actually. It's uh, is Genesis history, and that's and it's a question: is you know, is the book of Genesis actual human history? And it's and it's kind of a documentation of these guys that are scientists and seismologists and fucking geologists and all these people that study the aging of the planet and old, you know what I'm saying? And, and carbon dating and these things. You're saying that they, they they're saying it's it new. They, they line it up to to kind of yeah, it actually does. You're making a case for saying it's newer though than older, right? No. No. Okay. Cause there's other people, like I said, there's other people that, you know, those like sand pillars in certain, like in the, you know, like uh, out in the West and like Yosemite and Arizona and 
you know, Utah and stuff, they have those big sand pillars that they said are uh, eroded from wind, right? They got them in Africa and other places too. Well, there's a guy that made a contraption that basically replicates them in seconds. Now it's obviously to a smaller scale, you know, to like a little tabletop unit. But those same exact things that they're like, oh, those, the, the, that was just a canyon and the wind blew it into those pillars. This guy shows that it's vitrification through lightning bolts that happened like literally within seconds, not thousands of years or millions of years. Yeah, I know there's discrepancies in carbon dating and that at certain points it becomes carbon guessing. And that's when they get into the whatever billions and millions and hundreds of thousands of years old shit that's all that's all guessing that's like people say those are scientific facts those are scientific guesses and that's nothing more and if you change the criteria of what they use for carbon dating you can actually scale that time is going to fall within within the time frame of what is in genesis actually so well, with that being said, is you know, there's, to be, if, if to you're, be frank, though, science has never disproven the Bible if you're, at all. If you're talking about Genesis from the Pope and a Catholic standpoint, then he's totally fine with that. The uh, Pope will tell you that Genesis is perfectly congruent and that the Earth is 4.8, uh, 4.8, 4 billion years old. And he, the Pope will tell you that as soon as aliens come down Earth, that he's ready to do baptisms for all the aliens too so there's a certain point where religion has definitely given up with the whole huh, you guys think the earth is six thousand years old you guys are stupid so the, the, well, pope, the pope definitely has also yeah I'm sorry go ahead oh, well the pope say, the pope go yeah. ahead go ahead well the pope he he is with most every form even like if you want to go and you know, what people call crazy people, you know, and they're like, even Jehovah's Witnesses, they they don't believe that the earth is, there's no Christians on earth that really actually believe the earth is 6,000 years old. They've all adopted the theory that there's evolution and there's the Big Bang theory, the earth is 4.8, 4, uh, billion years old, that the the big, you know, the Big Bang caused the universe to expand and it's 14.7 that's more silly than trying to. I don't know, man. I a think Catholic, a Catholic priest is who came up with a theory of the Big Bang. But that's a Catholic priest. That's not. I don't know. That's different. I guess. So, so, but what I'm trying to say is, a lot of people make fun of Christians, or they say like, "Oh, they're stupid. They think the Earth is six thousand years old." But there's that's actually. Not, I don't know since what year that. that's not been true, but for at least in my lifetime, they've all gone with, oh, no, science has the, the keys to and all the answers to everything. We can believe scientists. They know exactly the age of the earth and the age of the universe. So even the highest, your, your priestiest priest, your preacheriest preacher, the Pope himself believes in the Big Bang. That's okay. not the preachiest of preacher, though. That's that's something totally different. And no, I, I'm saying all of them do, though, across the board. Catholics, Jehovah Witnesses, the you know, Quran, Judaism. That's not across the board, that's not a, that's not true. That's all that I'm trying. No, to it, say. It, there's it, plenty, it, there's, there's it, plenty it, of people that actually believe that that is six thousand years old. So I'm trying to say what well, you're mm -hmm. you're trying to rope mm -hmm. everybody together in a thing, and that's not true. That's not true. No, that's science true. has conquered all of that. I'm it saying. hasn't though. Every scientist that's set out to prove that wrong has actually come to actually be a Christian. So even Darwin himself. So I don't know. No, well, that's what I mean. Cancel culture hasn't came off Darwin. I don't even want to go into whole Darwin thing, but he didn't like Darwin. Skin I think if anything, science has disproven the Big Bang theory. Like that's totally no, 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 no. That's what I mean. No, that's not at all. Though, because, no, because children. No, that's what I mean. Children are taught that that's I know, absolute it's truth. nonsense. That's already been disproven, and we're still teaching it. In it doesn't matter. Disproven to me and you, Smiley. But children, they got to go to school and believe all that shit. No, they don't. I think it's bullshit. Why are we telling them some bullshit? Yeah, we it's think like it's bullshit, but the teachers don't think it's bullshit. 
the the people people. explaining it to those kids in school. The scientists have already disproven that Big Bang is even possible. The no, there's no proven so by Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson doesn't believe in the Big Bang anymore. I don't think so. I don't know, man. If he does, he's oh, no, sure. no, you got to go look it up. Uh, Bill Nye cool. and Neil deGrasse Tyson are preaching the ever living shit out of the Big Bang right now. I think it's Big, silly. You, you go, silly we're, we're retards, me and you, Smiley. We're, we're religious nut jobs compared to Bill Nye and. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Why is that? Because it is what they say it is, and it is the Big Bang, and it is evolution. Are you sarcastic right now? No, I'm. I'm being a hunt. That's. I'm literally being a hundred percent honest. That. It, that it sounds like a total sarcastic statement to me right now. I'm sorry, but it doesn't matter what we believe, man. They write history. The winners <laughs> write history. Right. Okay. I get what you're saying. It is a sarcastic statement, then. Uh, to me and you, it is, but not to them. They're, they would get pissed off. They'd be fucking turning all red in the face, getting all mad that we don't believe it. And I could ask Neil. The, I could ask him right now through three questions that would that, like to explain. The Big Bang only explains one one part of some elements, a handful of elements. There still has to explain the biological diversity that we have. In plants and fungi and what I'm saying is that we would be like not all that is explained through yeah but smiley what I'm saying is me and you would be (laughs) we would be labeled science deniers if we don't just want to go along and coattail off what they got to say science denies itself well uh, what I'm trying to tell you there's there's people there's a division there's people that believe in science and then they ignore religion because Science is there to tell them the truth. Science is their religion. That's what. Well, that's what I'm saying. Neil deGrasse Tyson and Bill Bill Nye, and among a whole bunch of other people, are the, those types of priests in that religion. Those that are the ones spilling out that philosophy and getting a lot of people to believe in it, and making us, like I said, look stupid because we're not supposed to talk about what we're talking about because. We're, guys, we're just low intellect. Guys, I'm I'm saying, up, man, there's up. a lot that doesn't get explained by Big Bang. So, I'm, I'm I'm up. Up. Time. Time. Peace really out, Bang. Appreciate, I appreciate both you guys and Eagle mm-hmm. Gardens and Vet. He's gone right now, and everybody in the chat room. But science is telling me that I got to go to fucking bed. It's your bad time. So, peace out, everybody, and God bless you all. Good night, friends. Good to see you, brother. Thanks for popping in, Vegas. Wise man checking out. <laughs> no, I still would argue, man, Big Bang does not explain the spark of life, so it does not explain the actual spark of life, where life came from. It doesn't explain the biological diversity, so the anthropological <laughs> diversity, and it doesn't explain our physical and mental wonder of where we came from and and our gra- even us trying to have these kind of discussions you know what i'm saying like like our introspection and our all of that that we do is is you our know when you watch life. those documentaries like on national geographic or whatever discovery channel and they got like the narrator and like we started from just a small point you know you know like right. that whole thing that that's just what i mean it's just like uh Maybe I've grown up past it because, like I said, I'm free thinking. But to me, it just seems like it's just made there for kids to be indoctrinated in. And, like, there's adults that pay attention to it, too. And I'm like, man, that's beyond nerdy. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Science doesn't explain all of that. We have no idea where the spark of life came from. And we can't. We can't explain it, we can't replicate it, and we can't we can't Frankenstein shit. Science ain't figured that out. We can map gene DNA, we can do all kinds of guessing at where shit came from, but we cannot recreate the spark of life. That is one thing that has not happened. That's, I, don't know. I guess they grow fucking meat in test tubes now or whatever, right? And fucking petri dishes. 
So that is some form of a cellular division, I guess, but I don't know. The, t the way I first saw that done is it was a, uh, this was years ago, but the way I, at least the headline said that a Japanese scientist figured out it turns sewage waste into edible meat. Right. So now anytime I see that, that synthetic edible meat, I'm like, oh, it just came from fucking doo doo drains. I don't want none of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, some of that stuff just seems weird, like the insect protein and some of these thoughts, too, of like feeding world hunger. I, I get it, man. Some of the problems are out there, but wow. <laughs> like, seems like there'd be other ways to think about it, you know what I mean? Just an opposite perspective, maybe. I don't know. Before eating, we're eating mealworm bugs. Mushed up into a hamburger. Just saying. <laughs> just saying. Yum. <laughs> Is it that bad? Is is what they say it is however many people are on earth, however many food, however much food needs to uh, sustain everyone on earth. Is that that bad? You know, that's a whole other thing if you want to go into philosophy and the opposite end of that is where we're at 2021. And I'll, I'll, hey, real I'll, quick, before we get going too far off of, off of this track here real quick. Uh, a minute ago when you were talking about the uh, about the Pope, did you hear, I don't know if it was this Pope or the last Pope, but one of the two Popes were talking about how uh, that they have evidence of aliens and I, I, they got those catacombs that go underneath the uh, city and stuff and there's all kinds of weird shaped freaking skulls and stuff like that in there. Did anybody else see that or am I just like out in left field? Well, that's what I mean. I, I do know that, they, that the, the Pope both of them, like you said, the last two popes have both considered extraterrestrials to the point that they both have uh, said that they would baptize any aliens that would come and want the baptism ceremony to be saved by Jesus or whatever, because aliens are going to believe in Jesus if they're coming from another planet. Anyway, yeah. Uh, if anyone hasn't read the book 1984, please go please read that book it's going to help you it's going to give you like a double iq it's going to raise your iq by two times whatever you're at right now <laughs> but uh the god what were watch the what, movie idiocracy <laughs> <laughs> so what was i going to say where we're at we're 2021 that was right where i left off uh Sorry, I derailed you. Squirrely, squirrely, squirrel running on a hamster wheel, squirrel running on a hamster wheel. Read 1984, two, two IQ higher. No, it was before that. <sighs> Pope. Pope? Pope. Aliens, catacombs. Aliens, no. Never mind. I'll think about it. If it comes back to me, I'll blur Is it, it out. Like, ah! <laughs> I, gotta right. use, I gotta use the potty. I'll be right back. <laughs> the old P distraction. That was the derail. Mm. That'll fucking derail a thought so quick, man. You gotta pee. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so funny because I, I, like, I'm a religious person, but I also believe in science too. So I see both sides of it and I'm like, yeah, I'm just right here in the middle. Just, yeah, I'm hearing it. I believe it. I just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I know I know I, I even if like you read into like revelate what is it no, no, no. is it revelate uh what's the last freaking revelation last one revelations yeah so if you listen to some of that stuff that sounds really freaking kooky and that was all written by King David and he was like yeah. on some kind of freaking trip supposedly when, he, when God was talking to him or John John yeah isn't that isn't he the one that he that John John took and, and showed the future? Yeah, he was like running a fever or something, I recall. Or yeah, so yeah. He, you know, lucid or whatever during it, and they were writing it down. Yeah, and some of the things that he was describing. I mean, if you really want to, if you really kind of think about it, a lot of it describes things that are happening today. Um, and I I thought it, I never really kind of listened to it until they started talking about how even in today's terms, like, like the big thing, I guess, that stuck out was like, 
uh, when they were talking about millet. Uh, it, he didn't know what he was seeing, obviously, but he was talking about uh, a creature that looked like a caterpillar that shot flames which in today's term would be like a, like a tank, right? You know, our tanks, tracks, they kind of roll like caterpillars. Um, and then they said flying, what'd they call it? Flying hornets or flying grasshoppers with stingers. Our yeah. helicopters look like, you know, something that flies that really shouldn't be able to fly. And the little wheel that comes down from the back is called a stinger. So, I mean, there's a lot of, um, you know, end of days kind of foreseen uh, in that in that book, but I mean, shit, man, this this country's been. Yeah, like I thought of I thought time. of like little mini drones flying around to stick you with a fucking vaccine shot and make sure you're up. To- <laughs> That's what I pictured at the end of the day: is little fucking drones. They're gonna get your ass, fucking little COVID nineteen shot flying around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I I enjoy, man. I enjoy the back and forth, dude. I I get pretty grounded in my belief obviously i've dug into it some and i don't mind talking about it and people will think i'm crazy or whatever i don't know but there's i was just talking freaking uh i was just talking with the the grower today uh <laughs> i mean like i said i believe in god and everything but i mean if you really kind of look at it like all these other cultures they all have <clears throat> here here's what that's that's where that thought was boom good brought it back good stoner so when you look at all these other religions, they all, you were talking about dating and you, that kind of carbon dating is carbon guessing. And, but if you look at all religions, they all have a similar story about who their higher being is. They all have similar stories of um, uh, world like events, like a world flood and certain, you know, uh, tsunami, you know, waves that certain. I mean, it's really hard to date that, but when each religion, like on different continents, have the same story, uh, who is God? Is it the God we know, or well, what did I know as a Christian, or is it the God that you know, Bo- uh, Chinese and Buddhist know, or is it you know, they all have this, or is it the God that uh, Allah? I mean, uh, hell, the Quran was in the Bible till somebody removed it, and is there i mean they have the same kind of story as we do so it's like really who's whose god is really the right god or is all these people the same being i believe the islam would say that allah is the same being across the board on them all but there's definitely some differences when it comes to like christianity in that respect for sure you know so i don't know i mean I remember I'm what I was say, I, you know, I'm, just, I'm not trying to sit here and be like, oh, I'm right, and everybody's got to believe like me. I'm just, you know, I mean, I'm just saying what I believe and trying to, you know, what, I mean, be as what, what I was going to say, it, I guess, before, as possible. I don't know. Uh, there's a philosophy that goes around it, and it, like I said, with the global warming and the cow farting and all that, and are we too big for our bridges? Uh, there's a philosophy that a lot of people I think adopted. I don't really like the sound of because it makes us seem like we're a really bad thing. But a lot of people believe that we're, a, we're like a mold on a sandwich and how mold will totally encompass a sandwich and turn bread moldy. A lot of people believe that we're a virus on the earth and we're killing the earth. And what would be best for the earth is if we weren't to exist, if we were to do you, do you realize how freaking true that true. that is because That's, if you actually look at like the uh the i know how you were talking to guys are talking about how it's debatable but i can't remember the trench whatever that deep trench is on the other side of that trench is where the 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 earth comes apart and every 300 years the north west uh uh magnet field switch and you can t- and when they test those rocks, you can see where those layers are. And it's I think it's three, feet, three or six feet, and then the 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 uh, electrodes switch in the rocks. But anyways, uh, what I was getting to is you don't really realize how little little time that we've been here in that mold kind of statement. The the weather that we've had for the last I don't know hundred thousand years is or 
yeah, Bill, yeah, hundred thousand years has been really unusual. We're actually in the middle of a going from a uh, what they call the ice age into a warm sm- a warm spell. It's getting ready to go back in this whole global warming. It's not global warming. It's the Earth going through its freaking cycle. <laughs> I mean, there's more carbon being put into the atmosphere from volcanoes and everything else than us and our, you know, gas guzzling vehicles. And if we're not here, guess what? It's going to continue to happen. And the Earth recycles itself and it goes through its whole spiel over again. The, uh, the life cycle of... Uh, planets like us that are per- in the perfect Goldilocks zone that they call it have a, a, a never you know like a always going wheel or never ending circle of climate phases to where like you said right now we're warming out of an ice age phase which will eventually lead to where there's no actual ice on the surface on on land or water there's no ice on the surface of earth and there's not one damn thing we can do about it so what that causes is a runaway effect to where every single year there's more and more and more and more water vapor and co2 in the atmosphere and eventually that'll cause such a runaway effect to where there's a a, so much of um, light reflected from our surface Toward now the opposite effects. Now there's a cooling effect. Now we get ice. Your buddy Neil deGrasse just said that not too long ago. He thinks we're actually we may be at that point of no return. Uh, That's I mean I I can go on both sides of this. I can sit there and have a friendly conversation with Neil deGrasse Tyson about the evolution and the way that they explain things. Then I can also explain it on the other side of things where we're not supposed to stray our minds and go off the far beaten path. But, but the way that they already, you know, they put their foot in their mouth with laying out science and uh, geology the way that they said it happened. So the way that they said it happened, like I said, there's a runaway effect at some point where there's an abundance of water vapor and CO2 in our atmosphere to where that reflects away enough sunlight to where it actually causes a cooling effect on the earth. And that's where you get icebergs and ice caps again. And in certain cases, you get a snowball earth where the ice caps totally meet all the way at the uh, equator. And it takes a long ass time for shit to geotherm- geothermically warm up to melt that ice on the surface. Otherwise, it's a complete ice ball and all of uh, the sunlight is completely reflected into space. But what you had in the last ice age is it only went down to the tropics only the temperate zones, the, the Arctic and the temperate zones were only covered in ice and it left the tropics still liquid, watery form. So uh, continue that process of all that ice melting and evaporating and all that ice growing and enclosing. And then it just keeps doing that. And that's if what we believe is really going on. Like we're saying, if we're millions of years old and there's this process that is way past human evolution and you know it takes millions of years to complete a cycle and where we're evolution is only a couple hundred thousand years old as far as we've ever been here so in the entire existence of everyone in our entire ancestry we wouldn't even be able to see the entire phase take uh, place Yeah, and I don't think our possibility of surviving this uh, this next uh, climate shift, well, it's going to be a hot one. I mean, there's going to be a lot of freaking water. Well, that, there's only supposed to be a couple of major land masses that are going to be even above water, correct? Well, this thing is they always said it was going to happen like 28 feet over a 100-year period. And then I always laughed at that, like, oh, that's slow enough process. Everyone... And then I thought of like the people that live in New Orleans and then their house gets destroyed by a hurricane. And like, man, you got a hundred year head start. You got a hundred years notice to head to higher land. There shouldn't be a problem with that if the sea levels only rise to 28 feet higher than they're normally supposed to be at. There should be no one 
you know, res held accountable for not being smart enough to, you know, prepare for that. Even if it's like said the way that they say it is. You guys said it is one thing. And that's, I mean, they, they put their foot in their mouth. They said this like 30 years ago. They're like, oh, by 2100, the ice caps are going to be gone and the sea level is going to be 30 feet higher than what it is now. So, well, now we'll have to see because me, me, me and you might not be here, but there's going to be some people to call them on their fucking bluff, right? 2100 is going to eventually come around. We'll see if Antarctica is still there. I still like the same old question, which came first, the, the chicken or the egg or the tree or the acorn? Which one? Which one started it off? I don't know. I got nothing. Neither does science, so that's what's funny about it. <laughs> you would think that the uh... The herbal part would have to come first, unless we were herbivores right off the get needing each other. So you'd think that, you know, the plant side of things would have to have came first, right? I said that right, right? We no, would right. have to be the, man the, the if we, or meat eaters if we would came first. If you watch a vegan right? documentary, they'll explain the whole evolution and that we actually evolved from herbivores and we're not at all carnivores. There's at least one vegan person that knows exactly what I'm talking about in the chat. But well, that's like referring to our teeth structure that we don't have jagged teeth that would tear apart meat. But, but that's that takes into account is evolution even real? Uh, are we going to go down that road Let's, and be science deniers and say that evolution doesn't exist? Because, like I said, we're bound by what science says is so. Science says is so that we did evolve from herbivores. So, thus saying we should all be vegans. Well, if we go to that road, I mean, the whole, the whole part on the science comes to the missing link. So there's your discussion. I mean... I don't know, but I ain't seen Bigfoot yet, so. Yeah, and, and if we want to go back to biblical, I mean, if we want to believe the earth right here and everything on it was made for us, that's what the, the other side of it, the evolutionary vegan side of it disagrees with is that no, cows were not made for us to eat. You know, we're meant to eat plants because that's what we evolved eating. So it gets divisive. And there's a lot to even the fact that we cook food too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, my, well, that's my favorite. My favorite philosophy on any diet, at least like you, you don't even have to come down to is the earth 6,000 years old? Is it 4.8 billion years old? Regardless, the history of what we did consume is the paleo diet. It is raw food or raw vegetables and cooked meats. So it, all of, regardless of what the fuck happened in history, your grandparents, my grandparents, everyone else's grandparents, great, great, great grandparents, they're eating foraged vegetables and cooked meats. That's what they survived on. Yeah, because there's something about the cooking process too that enabled us to like actually be able to sustain the energy from it. You know what I'm saying? Not being a like a total carnivore kind of thing, like what you're talking about. So it enables our digestive system to digest it, like cooked food or whatever. So it's yeah, there's interesting shit, man. I, I don't know all the answers. I don't claim to i'm just saying like science don't either that's all it doesn't explain a lot of it either we we discover things through science that's what you know what i mean we don't know anything we discover things and we form theories through science that's it but i like it i like the discussion 
I was going to say, so, oh, it, it, even saying uh, biblical or whatever, but I think it's the whole idea of uh, even further than that would be like creationist theory versus like a evolutionist theory kind of thing, you know. He's yeah. like talking about plants too, like even a phenotypical expression between two different environments that we see in plants. And, and then we take that to like, you know, epigenetics where those expressions get carried into the next generation and the next generation. And that could really, yeah, I mean, I don't know. People explain that through evolution, but is that just intelligent design in the DNA coding to begin with? You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's intelligence within the coding, the DNA coding that's within the plant to begin with that allows it to express different ways based off its environment and based off what interactions it has, you know? I don't know, there's two ways to look at it, I guess. That, that's what I mean. That's when you, I mean, we're, we're, talk, we're online, we're talking to ourselves right now and we're online talking to a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah, and starting a bunch of argue. I hope not. I hope not, man. I don't no, want no. to be an argument. I yeah, just no, no. I, open discussion with, at all. Man. With the, what you said, I know where what my philosophy I've I've came to that. My I've done the obstacle, the the mental gymnastics is what people like to call it. I've done enough in my head to figure out what how that makes sense and why it doesn't or why it does or you know <laughs> that part of my you know what i go you know philosophy is all figured out i'm comfortable believing with in all that but like i said some people it doesn't make sense to i, I or not necessarily doesn't make sense to but i've said from the science standpoint of it they have a harder time disagreeing with it because they think the other camp is somehow, you know, uh, proselytizing religion, trying to get you to go to church. Yeah, I don't know, man. I just think the very idea that we're even discussing this kind of shows that there's some kind of an extra spark that we have that would, wouldn't have necessarily evolution wouldn't have it wouldn't explain our psyche of trying to even ask these questions you know what i'm saying like it, to me this this discussion in itself proves that there's a god so and i i think it's a thing that like I said it's a contracted time a, a dilate you know, time is compressed smaller than what we believe in and that phenotypic expression kind of proves that because how quick is evolution you know how quick can you acclim you know, climatize or acclimatize a strain to its environment, cannabis's sake? I mean, I would think from our experience alone, we would know it doesn't have to take millions of years for that process, you know, to work. You can climatize varieties of cannabis in two, three generations. Where does a where does a bird in a in a feline cross? Where does a feline and even a canine cross they don't through evolution that's those are the other oh, games i'm glad you bring that up because biological diversity period is not explained through that i'm glad you bring that up because never that's a where a lot of people there you know they they kind of get confused with evolution sorry excuse me they kind of get confused with evolution needing that millions of years to take place and then you go back to the flood story and then, you know, the whole thing is you're supposed to take two of every kind of animal on there, right? People are like, wait a second, there's 10,000 new species that are discovered every day. There's 30,000 species that are going extinct every day. There's millions of plants, there's millions of animals and mammals and marsupials and this and that. How could Noah possibly have a boat that big enough to fit every single animal and a pair of all those animals on one boat? Well, the answer is, is he didn't have to do all that that genetic display of all those different fucking phenotypes basically are all what happened from the two different birds he took to a fucking toucan and a robin they're both birds it's toucan true. and robins are gonna make babe bird babies and all those bird babies are gonna fly around the world and become their own individual species same thing with a dolphin and a fucking manatee. A dolphin and a manatee are going to become a dolphin and a manatee babies. 
and they're going to swim around the ocean and become every other little species that they want to be. And because we know from growing seeds and growing a 10 pack of seeds, and we know like these aren't stable breeding genetics, this isn't a true breeding strain. There's 10 different pheno, there's one different phenotype and a 10 pack of seeds for every seed that I just sprouted. The reason is because evolution is trying to figure out a way of its best survival mechanism. And that's the best way of doing it. And it doesn't take millions of years, at least for cannabis. Maybe cannabis is some super highly evolved being and it knows how to evolve a million times faster than any other species. But I, I would think that we would be able to recognize time playing out before our eyes and seeing that a little bit faster than it, you know, we're like, how, how could that be? How could there be billions of species of bacteria and elephants and uh, yeah, uh, praying mantises and all that kind of shit? Uh, that's just what happened in the last few thousand years is there is that much different expressions. You could have left the mosquitoes off there, just saying. I left the damn mosquitoes. Well, you know, Bill Gates doesn't want the damn mosquitoes around anyways. <laughs> right. so. You could have left them off. <laughs> I think we're all on the same page. You get what I'm saying, right? You, you need a rhinoceros and a hippo. And then you got fucking elephants. You got <laughs> everything in between. Yeah. Hey, did, didn't they find like the Noah's Ark up in like the Himalayan mountains or something like that? Turkey, uh, yeah. uh, in Armenia. Duravan. Oh, what it was? And slid down. There's dispute on it or whatever, but yeah, there's definitely evidence that would indicate that it would be likely as it's way a boat that's way up in a mountain <laughs> in the similar described area and made of similar wood. You know, that would be a major shift in this uh, debate between science and um, religion. It's a huge shift in it. There's other evidence for a flood as well. So. Uh, do you guys well, that's know what who, I'm saying. Every religion, religion says that there's a flood. Do you guys know who Randall Carlson and Graham Hancock? Any of those names? Anyone familiar with? Negative. Okay, so like I said, uh, it was folklore and a lot of, uh, you know, very downplayed, very easily to talk away from religious theory you know a lot of science didn't want to adopt the theory of a flood up until i want to say my lifetime where a lot of people started piecing this together that uh, actually every single world's civilization actually has the same exact story of the flood and in in order to have physical tangible proof like saying where scientists need it they need to believe it you know see it to believe it where this Randall Carlson came into play and he piggybacked off Grant Hancock's uh, concept of he, his little, his whole uh, body of work is summed down to his phrase that he calls uh, humanity uh, is a species with amnesia, meaning we forgot our entire history. So his whole thing is he's about the Atlantean thing. He's about, you know, Atlantis was this mass maritime civilization that was already on every continent and had different, you know, cities and all that kind of stuff. And where Randall Carlson comes into play as he's the actual geologist and he's gone to like Mississippi and here in Wisconsin and like South Dakota and like all the different places where uh, they have uh, glacier erosion in North America. And they basically got the scientific, whatever body of minds to believe what they call the Clovis comet, which was uh, what, what they said that we talked about the ice age shifted the ice age instead of having it go into the runaway snowball earth when we still had a little uh, zone in between the temperates and the tropics, supposedly there was a comet impact was somewhere around Greenland and that broke apart all the glaciers in North America and that's you know what became uh, the Mississippi River and uh, all the Great Lakes and all that so what they got 
science to believe is that is the great flood that all the ancient people talk about. It was that comet impact and those glaciers breaking apart. But the, what that spins into is that opens the door for science to take that whole Atlantean shit seriously. And if you follow more of Grant Hancock's work, he did more work with other geologists trying to, like I said, push back the date of the pyramids and the Sphinx being built instead of being built like at uh, whatever, 4,500 years ago or 2,500 BC. Supposedly, they want to put it to about uh, 10,500 BC. And there was another Egyptologist that said the very same thing, like the zodiac signs and all that were the same, but he pushes it back to a whole nother 25,000 years prior and says that the Sphinx was constructed 35,000 years ago. So I could keep going into further blibbity blabbity blue, but I don't even remember where the fucking original point that I started off with, but. I've gone that yeah, far. Oh, you're going to walk us in a 10 minute, 10 minute story. And then you're going to f- conclude Ready? with, I don't know where I left off. <laughs> no, I got you. Chad, <laughs> Chad went. Uh, if someone was listening to that whole 10 minute story. They got to at least kick me a little sideball or something. Uh, hey, and Chad, Chad, Chad Westport said, so how many extinction events have we had? Okay. So that, that's, an, yeah. uh, there's a lot, right? Okay, so do, th- that, that's what I'm trying to mean. Is, thank you, Chad Westport. You, you filled in the gap enough. Is science is taking the biblical account of the flood serious due to Randall Carlson and Graham Hancock? It would just be Graham Hancock saying a whole bunch of conspiracy bullshit if supposedly it wasn't for 32nd degree Freemason, Randall Carlson, to kind of steer the wheel. Oops, did I say he was a Freemason? Were you not supposed to? Well, that's the whole thing. It kind of gets suspicious. And when they do, I think, maybe five or six different Joe Rogan experiences and Randall Carlson just can't help himself. And he's like, you know, I've co-opted this whole movement. Joe, I'm supposed to get you a part of this whole thing. That's what we're here for. You know, they kind of do that thing where you want to go on the whole. They they got to to get away from karma, from doing bad things on earth, to get our consent, they got to show us exactly what they're doing or tell us the whole trick. You know, so that's the thing is they, they try to get that. They try to get people like Randall Carlson to hijack Graham Hancock's work and take it in there and be like, science totally agrees with this when it's, I, I could go more into that too, but Graham, Graham Hancock also has a lot to do with ayahuasca and a whole bunch of other stuff. And we're just going to go further down the damn wormhole with that. But the, the end of the game is we're all supposed to just do ayahuasca and listen to whatever the fucking plant gods say. Okay. <coughs> well, it's 420. So cheers, everybody. Cheers. Good call. I just... I just don't choose to and create I rolled up for it and then I gave it to the wife and she took off. <laughs> it happens that way, brother. It happens that way sometimes. It's my day episode of Playlist. Why thank you, honey. It's gonna, I know it's going to be a fucking YouTube commercial, too. And you know, at, at, like every couple hours, I'll hear the wife be bopping through the house doing that little tune. She doesn't sit here and, and, and listen in like I do. Like, I don't get to, to I don't get to hang out with you guys too much at night. But when I do my garden work, I listen to the show from the previous night i'll come upstairs and do something and she's all do 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 all right i didn't mean to like blast it like that <laughs> it, you know what that is cool 
all you guys should think this is cool. You know, my local, the local girl store plays the show in the store every day. Huh? How cool is that? That's cool. They got a big old screen TV behind the counter at 50 inch that plays the show through the day. Huh? That's cool. And I, I just wonder though, how many people are like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? It is kind of elevator music. Yeah, but... but it's almost like your uh, like your little theme song coming into the ring kind of thing. What a happy what a happy walkout song in wrestling. <laughs> Here comes this the guy. He's gonna hug me to the mat. He's gonna he's gonna shotgun a fucking dab into my fucking lungs. I, I just I'm sorry. I just I I cannot take this as a walkout song there, Sus. I, I I would I could not take somebody seriously to come out trying to tough guy me to this right here. <laughs> maybe that boxer Don Flamenco, the guy from Punch Out. Maybe maybe. <laughs> Uh, if anyone has uh, any practicing uh, mixed martial art fighters at their jujitsu uh, school, please get them to fucking walk out to the dab song. You got to turn it up. We can't hear it, I guess. <laughs> they can't hear it. <coughs> I think I got my mic turned off. Or uh, my filter. That's what it is. Right, you can hear it now. The zoom filters actually work really good about blocking out back background noise if you set them. I was surprised you guys can't hear the fucking wind ton wind tunnel fans in here, man. Right? Oh, it's impressive. Oh, I might as well let it play. Huh? What happened, baby? Dollar Tree Productions. She's over here dancing. I was getting ready to turn the camera. She's like, no! <laughs> Oh, that's good shit. Got some creative people in the community, that's for sure. Thank you, man. I totally agree. All right. All right. Got a big one tomorrow? Big day hey. tomorrow? Hey, where's that? Uh, where's that tune from? The wife's one to know. The dab Which song. Which one? The last one. Yeah, the dab song. The dab song is uh, actually T for Two is the original song. That version for is two? from uh, yeah, Warren Covington. Or, it's actually the tune. If you want, I'll send you the link. Yeah, yeah. Would you do that? Go send me a link. Absolutely. Double dab. What are you dabbing at? Have you changed uh, the slabs lately there, Reco? Got a little bit of the slab still left. I'll be uh, picking up something in the next couple days here. Well, shiny. That's your smallest. That's the smallest object that I've seen you pull off to dab off of. Yeah. All right. Yeah, this is the one or two day supply right here. 
I still got the distal and I still got some flour left over too. That looks more like a uh, Quizo. Yeah, it's because it's, I don't know how to show how thick it is there, but. Oh, yeah, it's pretty thick. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, when it's spread out thin on the parchment, it looks nice, but when it's folded over four times like that is, then it tends to look darker. But like I said, it's nothing to be excited about anyways, so. So, it's not always something to be excited about. As long as you got something, you should be excited about it. Yeah, it's just not very aesthetically pleasing or photogenic, you know. Yeah, the damn song used to be the offspring. 42420's got that right. Now, do I mind? I miss that person. I don't that's stable enough, and I like it. I don't mind thick slab shatter, but it's, is it the most best thing to dab on? I don't know. No, I'm excited. To me, it's medicine, so I'm just happy, you know, <laughs> to have it. But I'm not being as spoiled as I would be back in Colorado being able to dab on my favorite concentrates, so. Or you can even make that else matter. Colorado's beautiful. I used to live out in Colorado Springs and I also lived in uh, Pueblo West. I, yep. I was stationed out there at Fort Carson. Yep. Lived in Colorado Springs six years. What you got, Smiley? Oh, I just finished uh, the Skywalker, some of that one. And I had a blue lime pie in between there. So. Now that's something I'd be excited about. Oh, the blue lime? Yeah, that's one of mine. I, I have Six. the blue power seeds, like, we, like I've mentioned before, but I've had blue lime pie concentrate from my favorite concentrate company. Yeah, dude, that it makes a killer concentrate sauce, so too. Super tasty. But, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been going good, man. <laughs> In that easy, easy week, so, so to speak, too, right now, so. You got, you're in the coast week? Yeah, the coast week. God, I love the coast week. It goes by too fast. It does. You bust everything out, man, and get it all done, and fucking then you sit back like you. You're you're pinning them girls down, and I'll be able to fucking sit back and water them for a little bit, and it'll be fine. They're gonna do their thing for a few weeks. Well, the two of them, the first two I pulled down, I, they're ready to go. I'm, I'm throwing them in the flower. That, that girl, as you can see behind me, she's obviously not full enough to, to throw in yet. She's going to need a couple of days to kind of spring back up. So maybe a week. We could. I'm not going to push her. Be a good carcass for... Uh, you know, I was asked the other day if I had started the um, the rebudge project. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I haven't. I want to actually use one of these pots right here for a rebudge. Multiple reasons for for that is uh, one. I think uh, they've got some pretty decent soil in there that I can maybe you know continue to top dress, even if I didn't have room. Because I've talked about, you know, taking it a few runs, you know what I mean? As far as I can to see if there's any variance and whatnot. But uh, 
Well, they're already picked up some in this pot. So I've left an airspace probably about six inches underneath, you know, the bottom of the pot. So it's picked up in its pot about that far. So as time goes and I top dress, you know, and run out of room in the top, I could actually drop her down another six inches or whatever. I could probably, I should probably do that sooner or, eh, yeah, bury it up just like I did these other girls. Yeah, bury her up, cut her back, bury her up. Yeah. No, you do nice work. I, I always tease you about being so brutal with them, but they come out looking nice, so that's what matters, right? They, they're, they're so resilient, though. I think people baby them too much, to be honest with you. <laughs> that, I think Back what around. I just did right there is... Right, what I did right there is probably more gentle than the topping, I think. Yeah. And if you few hours all that would be all turned up to where you know if i were to top her real hard and went through top 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 it would have been you know two five days before i would have seen you know some new growth out of that girl springing back and you know supposed to i only top when i'm cloning really otherwise it's like I hate hacking them down like that, but I don't really tie them over because I don't have the space to be able to do that. So they're straight up in. I used to take my uh, clones from the bottom when I'm cleaning up the the skirt there. You know, I don't usually take tops tops that often. I, you know, I would bend the grow them up, bend them over, and if they need anything from that point, I'd take my clones from underneath. Yeah. Yeah, it works. I like the fresh top clone though, man. I don't know. They just come out with a lot of vigor, especially if you can get like the, I don't know, the caliber size of the stem or you cut it. Some of the side branching will do the, it'll be a really great clone as well, as long as the caliber of that, that stem is big enough to support it. You know what I'm saying? Some of the side branches where they're just little, you know, real little skinny, skinny, stems going in where you can hardly poke them into the root riot or whatever it's like some of those are the best when they they'll root but they're not gonna i don't know come out with the bigger like the like a nice top or or one with a thicker you know what i'm saying people always had that argument whether to take one from the top or the bottom and i don't think that's the mat what matters i think it's the size of the stem that you're taking you know if it's like a pencil, that thing's going to fucking rage when it gets roots. When it gets roots, but it's going to take a lot longer to root, in my opinion. Sometimes some thick girls take a lot longer to root. Yeah, that's why I think... Sometimes not at all. You know, I've tried to, like, when I've actually it broke off tops, you know what I mean? Trying to bend them over like that. And then I'm like, oh, fuck, snip, 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 snip. <laughs> Try to take a clone out this girl like that. You know, you know if they're, you know, three eights, oof, man, it's, it's hard as fuck to get a root out of, you know, something that's, you know, three eights of an inch around if I'd stick it in there. Bigger than a pencil. Bigger than a pencil. She's usually pretty woody at that point. Anything that Woody is super tough to clone, at least in the Oxy cloner. Really a better root with, uh, you know, something that sprays up at it, or I don't know. But I've never had very good luck in my Oxy cloner with Woody or thick stemmed clone. Uh, Woody's the one that really matters there, too, I think. You don't want them to be too Woody. They got to be nice, fresh green, green stem. Even when they get that purple striping to them, that's almost like the first stage of like it hardening off and getting all woody. Like, cause I I know like the when they're like purple stemmed or striping to them where they're stressed like that, they're hard to fucking clone them too. It's hard to get roots out of those. Fucking okay, no, yeah, oh, hey. a long day tomorrow. 
Oh, yeah, ahead. I was just getting ready to say I'm going to have to get out of here. Yeah, me too, man. It is that time. So I sent you the link under uh, Vets Grow, by the way, for some odd reason. Huh. Yeah, that's where it's that's all right. All right, I uh, we'll you the Vets Cup. The Vets Grow Cup is where that link is. Okay. Hey, I got a little bit of news for that. I'll have to hit you up. Uh, well, I don't have to hit you up. We've actually moved it a week closer, and it's at a different location. So just the weekend before. It's Friday. Uh, <laughs> so that B&B will be on Friday the 13th. So the event will actually be 15th and 16th. Or 14th and 15th. Yeah, there we go. 14th and 15th. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Yeah. We're going to be at the fairground. I'm, I'm, not, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have the expo building. But I'm not 100% sure. I may get the bigger building. I'm not sure yet. I got to see which one I can get first, though. So. Sounds like it's going to be a good time. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me on no, tonight, shame. Eagle. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say that now it's changed there. We should reapproach Mendo. <laughs> uh, I, I already have. I already <clears throat> have. And I have already heard back. And I. I learned from last time. I'm not going to say anything until until the, the, the paperwork's signed. I've been there. I've been there. I understand. I've been there, too. Sometimes you curse yourself by throwing uh, it out there. R.I.P. Pink Seeds. Have a good day, but bro. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys very much. Yep. Good seeing you. I'll, I'll, see, I'll see if I can push that along. If I can I can help. I'm going to be there. I want to meet him. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, yeah, man. I might jump out, too. I thought you were, had something you were trying to say, right? This was jumping out there, though. Oh, I was just going to say that uh, I think you were asking me earlier if I had a long day today. Which, eh, not really. I'm fucking, it could be fucking, fucking almost 80 degrees today. I got just like a tiny bit of things to tie up. Just enough excuse to get the fuck out of the house. <laughs> so I'm thinking. Man. Then what happens for the rest of the day? Who knows? I'm out. <laughs> I'm a bright sunny day. Roll down the windows and crew. Sure. Oh, yeah. There's a lot to be done on that side of the lake on beautiful sunny day. I hope you get out and enjoy it, man. You too, Red Bill. Good to see you. Yep. Always good going around. You have a good day too, brother. Yeah, man. Have a good one, chat. Peace out. Okay. I'm out too then. Another great night in the wormhole. Thank you, uh, Eagle. Thanks for popping in, brother. Yep. Cheers Look forward to, to talking to you tomorrow. Of course. I'm, I might have to, there might be another hiatus coming up here to get the raised bed finally done. But, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be here tomorrow. Just to give you a little heads All up. All right, bro. You don't get worried about me. You know I'll just check in. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Eagle. Here, right? And uh, cheers, chat. Love you guys. Peace. Thanks. Uh, I can give my shout out to this. I miss it a, was I missing a little piece yesterday? I hope not. I hope I didn't miss a whole sheet of shout outs. So that'd be fucking rude. That would be rude now, wouldn't it? Uh, it was kind of nice to see Pete from Operation Girl in chat. It's been a couple of old, older, but new names in chat. I, I guess is that the proper way to put that? Older, but new, new names in chat? Either way, always great to see everybody in chat. Let's see what I can get away with tonight playing. Mm, cheers, cheers, cheers. Let's see. I'm trying to find something good for us. Let's play a little Blueberry Jam. It's been a minute since we 
kicked out the blueberry jam. Yup, yup. Yup, yup. Here we go. Oh, hold on. How about I play it from the other speaker? Oh, can I play it from this one? Can you guys hear it? Hopefully you guys can hear that. Some cool D's House of Tank, Mama Law 710, Scarecrow 420, Green Thumb Bum, Christina Anton, G89 Unplugged 705, Medical McGullah Cuddy, Rick T, The Rebel, The 9207, Baby and Selena, Safe's Not Here, Tom Spook, Greg Walker, Mendo Dope, T Dog, Dung B, oh, Red Eye Jedi Grows, Mother Nature, Justin Conway, Duckweed, Run Boy, 7426, Justin Good Earth, Strong Man, Opie Grower 75, Corey Trevor, Michael Wallace, Mold Vision 420, Who, Who's Your Cat Daddy, Taco, Don Slug, Rick S, In the Bushes 827, James Seamus, Kevin Hahn, World Class Hope, Pets Fan 420, by Martin, and by Hope, Minter, Dirt Road Dude, Ken Shiva, Jose Ramirez, Red Eye Rustler, Dad, Goblin, Dr. Buffs, Light Your Acetone, 710, Canoe, Queen, Genetic, Savvy, Tanazi, Blue Lord, Dirt Man, Dan, Keith the Black Sales, Mr. Bocillus, Sin Premium Gardens, Ross Bob, Ross and Jess, Soil Group, Small Tunes, Tyler, Frosty Bugs, North Michigan, Micro, OG, but Stub T Roy, Big Jar Girls, JC, Modern Genetics, Okel, Weed John, Okel Weedner, that is John, Last PPG 15, Green County Grower, CJ Apple, Perfectly Imperfect, and Dollar Tree Grower, C T1 Productions, Dank Grower, D O A Grown Meds, Miss Moody Grows, I Grew Some, Johnny Canacy, Nutrient Shootout, Sonic Nikki, Zoe Slammer, NNY, Pixel Monkey, St. Bernard's Observation Boat, Cover 420, High Spy, Aldridge 25, Miss Madam T, Sue Mo Grower, The Can of Creek, Kyle Loki Grows, Sus, This Guy, Burton, 79, 79, Polis Hammer, Midwest Outlaw, 31, Voodoo Ultras, Fresno Nerds, Kelly Connections, Wolverine Grove, Big Jar Grows, Jimmy One for Life, Late, Way Back Farmer, Jimmy, our D Block, MMP Nations Creations, Amber Lonic, Psychedelic Warlock, Artist LD, Sir Sticky Rob, Big Day 420, Brent Wendell, Big Ed 1961, Matawana G3, The Green Click J and K Triple G, Mr. Sprinkler, Brittany and Tyler Teasley, Hope Farms, Lisa G, John, B2 Crazy for You, BG, WG 420, Dr. Bud's 12, for Purple Thumb OG, Arthro, Spence Amelia, Arthro, Just Face 420, Beast Coast World 420, Sir How Trade Alone. Keep it real. Hagerton 420 Sub Suckle and Audit Everywhere. BTW Gross Bingus. Green Puffin Man. Alex Boyk Chef Life. School of Crop Cuz I Love It. Green Mountain Grower. Southwest Oki. Real 100, 212, Andy Man, Miranda Family Farms, Page Farms, Me All Flower, Ryan Henderson, Green 13, New Child Wild Winds, Came to Michael Pondas, Indra, Michigan Native, Mary Jane's Mad Garden, Streamer 77, Double D, Bad Buddy Nutrients, Smith's Green Pots, Smith's Green Nugs from 619 to 664, Spaniard Kruger, Jones and Grove, Pop G Grows, Raz Amy, Drove Groves, Cast, The Grow From Your Heart Podcast, Lily Luna, The Green Med Flock, Jeremiah Miranda, Sony Creek, Lost Art, Mr. No One, LG 420, Giant Mike, Prometheus Soil, Jason I, so P. Wynn, David Colby Mason 662 The Scroggy makes Scrogton Fourth Goddess Grows Kaylee Burrows, I believe, but I always say just Kaylee. Chad Brad Family Farms, Holly P. Vjorg, Eric Ferguson, Kevin Jodry, Mike Honcho, Jay Huggins, UDA, Green Tree Hugger, Kush Cloud, Joshua Seensland, Own Organic, Home Buds, Warren Nelson, Kane Wood, Maine Mystic. Show Love Always, Kelly Stone, Texas OG, Chuck Norris, Sarge S, Claire Fresno, Happy Guy. Oh, end of that one. Dan, the indoor man. Gromies, homies, Hamilton, Grows, Clip, Smoke, Can of Collapse, Can of Stone, Clip, uh, let's try it third time. Can of Stone, Can, no Can of, Keystone, Can of Flag, PA, damn, the Big High 710, Eugene Greenleaf, Ace Through Hustle, Fred Darn, Carlos, North Arizona, Beer Grove, No Cello, Jesse White, Gassane, Yeti, Introvert, Genetics, Soso J, Vixen, Robin, no, Killer 8, Mo, James Buttercream, G Dub from NorCal, The Pharmacy Seed Bank, North, or Dreadhead, Smokey 616, Curtis Mayhem, Matt Myron, Morte, Rick Heyman, Stephanie Dora, Tennessee, Fab Carries, K, Mike Rubo, So Drew Bear, 420, Max, and 751, Lawrence Gonzalez, Slow to Get Up, Stu Moo, Popco 719, Baker Shake Baby, Old Smoke, PWC, Grown Bugs, Floor Wash, Miss Weed Blunt, Old School Grower, Chad Westport, Haunted Grown Floor, Nugs, My Little Piece of Head, Punch It, Sound Seeds, Goliath, Go, Richard T, Chrissy Wannabe, Mr. Soul Food Spectrum, Gone God, Lori Hansen, Real 2000 Years of Tradition, Mr. D. Connolly, Kim Jam, Make Floating Face, Show Me Sasquatch, Fuck Google and You, I'm Going Well, Baby, Kidney Indian Resort, Poor Deer Farmer, Carl Wright, Zephner, Humble Farm, Sanity Farm, Seldom Seen, Old Park Gardens, Hale 9782, Sanogi Packs, Martial Artist 2012, 
Michael Slade Hefner, Danny McDizzle, Medically Fit, KGB, Robert Mr. Green Fingers, Motherfucker Thomas, Rachel Post and Plenty, Monkey Balls, Andrew Chappell and Bobby Lynn Means, Trench Digger, Mr. Mac, Tony Baloney, Bill S. Sweet Peace, Tater Delicious, Minty, Country Roots, here on Fire Genetics, Earth Creeper, Big Ray 420, TD 101, Buds and Hands, Mr. Club 14, Peter V Rants, Farm 616, Null Up North, Max Groom and Ruby, Timothy McKimmons, Neil, Justin B, Socratic 88, Fat Belly Real, Jennifer Steele, Kimbus 03, Turf Farmer, Skin and Stevens, Carlitos, Latino, Scotty Country, Mr. Speed, Wolfstein, Firesaw, Wooly Wookie, The Goddess Growth, Rasta Bob, White Feather Grows, Wooly, Wally, Wookie will be here tomorrow. I can't wait for that. White Feather Grows, Burning Shrooms, Tone Grows, Zank, The Cape Man Grows, BX, Gunner, Smith, Dude, New Grows, Sean McCann, JX, J Moots, Dink, Agenda, Walla Walla, Canna Grow, Valdog, Huron, Cannabis Council, Ulysses, Parish, Rock Fam, Justice Make, 420, Ben, Fresh, Grow, Thriving Herbs, and an iPhone commercial. Come on. Uh. Thriving Herbs, hi, boy, your mailman grows. We be growing Australian grows for love of the plant, Argo American, Spot Poker. Unfrozen Caveman, Hawaii's Highest Surf Craft, Micro Goon, Jeff Lowenfels, Mobius Grows Inc., Brownie Sandy, Elliot Harkins, Mystic Flavored, The Forging Gardener, Overwater Overkill, Seattle Seed, Shadow Warrior, Valley Green 514, Mealy Jensen, Oz Indica, Dr. MJ Coco, Brandon Russ, Matthew Gates, D's Bag, Drone Star, Shotgun, Willie Dink, Yoda, Jay Simmons, Sure Bro, Gross, Clackamas, Who, DJ Conley, ATJ, Light 1978, Michigan Grown Buds, Your Boy, Roy Boy, Delta 9, Jay McDaniels, Clackamas 420, Sinky Cola, Still Inside for PFC Farms, Husky Garden, Sun Grown 707, JA Dro, JA 420, Cascadian Gross, T Toads, McGee, Four Plants, Eight Weed Works, Captain Scrog, Skunky Buds, Hobbs Warrior, Jackie Young, Terry Lee Live, with Gassy Tempe, Annie N, D Urge, Green Junior, Leon from All Purpose Plus, Green Goose, 11 Smiles, 11, Bindu Buds, Michael Ross, and Grows, Dan the Indoor Man, Grow Me So Me's Car, I got that side, 311 Mix Up, Kindred Grows, Evergreen, G's Friends, Tree, MMJ, Bat SA, Ball, Dragonfly, B, Justin Metz, Travis Walls, Lucky Mike, Seattle Chronic Seeds, King Chronic, Titan from Bless Coast Seeds, Chiango, Gas, Wabasso Flight, John Smith, Tommy Trico, Smoke King, Raz, Pop Little, Full Roll, Pike, Spiky Pilots, Oscar Green Jr., Matt Silbert, Into 11, Stephanie B, Sharp Pulley 989, Von Braun, Simon Garden, Sonar Nation 420, Joe Wide Bugs 1313, Rower, Painted Lady, Frank Boot, Jay Myers, to Mid, to Chat, Mr. Manny D, Bagsy, DGC, Dr. DGC Jeff, that is Shredder 911, Dutch Gross 420, Skellywag, Skill Bowl 1, Meta Grower 1, Empire, Breeding Co. for Groly, Lost Leaf, Leah, Man, Sandy, Danko, B Bear 7, Ali Noble, CK, Tom Trinidad, Looney Jester, Smoking with Small Town, Tipman, S, Mr. Lazy, Raptor Grows, Rob, Automation is Freedom, Robert Hazel, Dwarf, Michigan Core, Double Tap Farms, Mr. Green Thumb 420, 808, Rooting Prospects, the Cannon Bus Drivers, Hate and Life, Kenny 710, Operation Grow, T Ben, Root Nut 619, in the Hammered emails. Thank you both. Dr. Scrambles, VB Moonrock, GHF, Double J, Dio Green, Self Grower 56, Hanky Safety 420, OGKP, Ganjanana, Your Mama, Georgia Joe, Roy Rodriguez, B Growing, Nature's Plus Nugs, Killer B Growing, Ganja Wizard, Husky Gardens, Nut Tree 420, Dr. Ooh, Soil Life 420, Bowley for Life, Jeff, the Jeff Row 420, B the 698, Dr. Franklin Booty. I got damn on Big Ted's test. The Riffin' Fat Boy, Jack Greenstock, 420, 420, Boom Farms, Charlie Farm, 420, Aldridge, 25, Mr. Smiley's Garden, Shady's, Miss D's Nugs, Grove, Smoke and Grove, Frazier, Rokoski, Twisted Roots, Fading Farm, 420, Jeff Dorowski, Genetic Memory, Farms and Ball, 420, Cameron, Mr. Bagsy, Jill Carter, Mystic Marks, Mr. Root, Mystic Grower, Ginger Snaps, DTE, Grows A, Rick Wolf, DLP, 2372, Ned Denver, Mike Denver, Sergeant Pepper, 420, Ken Trooper, Blank Cat, 420, Light Up Again, Tim, UKSIF, 420, Boot Boy, Devin Chipper, Medical MJ, Budsville, USA, Resurrection Proper, Chris Martinez, Dink Man Dan, Dink Man 420, Red Set of Farms, Good Life, Joni Bell, Teacher Pete, Most Handy Grower, The Major Gen 420, The American One, W Digger, 714, Sarathes, Kinio, Synthetics, Mountain Skies, Ready Hit the Hot Five, Chris Merch, Ian, Save Robbie, Sergeant Live, Hepa Fake, Cam Finger, Lace Fires, Rich Face Patch, Dozen Moon, Southern BT Grower, Choose Medical, Jerry Player, Plus One, Mushroom, Secret, Sunday Pot, and Here's My Little Tent, 2040 Sport, 2042 Space Walker, Christian Tree Mump, T Barrington, Heart and Soul, Home. Grown. Mike B, T. Dwayne, East Coast Will, Huddy Dave, Galactic Gardens, John Smith, Elliptics, My Natural Farms, Pacific Northwest Seeds, Ross Kaipo, Lemon Hel Lemon Hoko, Trench, Rita's Juicy Life, Richard 420, Grant Manual, Mary Bond, Sammy Sizzle, 81, 9 Inch Colas, Chris Moe, DK Trades, Vision Creator, Guru, 
the kind brew cannon nation jjd's bob wobby sean bins rescue ready roadside notorious snugs magma seeds father and son trimming tutorials Dub T Dank, Jose Martin Perez, Dog with the Hut for 20, Moonpuck, Chief of Man, GR 420 Community Videos, Detroit River Rat, Lewis Garcia, Michael P, AJ Day, Captain Daughter, Chad Bob 13, for Main 420 Med Grower, Cookie Scoop, Jay Hendricks, In for the Grill, Backwoods All Good, Sally Mansell, Adam Skankin, Chanel Simpsons, One Smoke Awake, Andrew Rhodes, Kazoo, Aaron Burning Shrooms, Mr. Lincoln Stinkin, Angel Studios, MG, the 420 Rotet, Paul Diella, John Fleming, Dankovich, Fibro Flower, Polly P, Seldom Seen, Elevated, Delany, Organic, Sun Man, Chiba Sunny, Jeff Popolic, Ricardo Sosa, Dan J, Earth Friendly Farming, Candy Forest Farming, fuck all that B, I'm going, uh, <laughs> The Misfit Grower, Jason Line 512, Snake Eyes, Northern 4466, Jason Grayson, Stoner Baker, MD. Hopefully, you are going to snap out of that coma soon, brother. My heart and prayer goes out to you as well. All it should, all of yours. Russ Sonic, French Dweller, Tartan Superman, Old Man Herbert, Ash Freebird, Mo Grower, Madagar, Simple Man, Survival Time, Tim Blake, Cough Coast, Chronic, Stink Fat, Cavalier Polaro. Harley Grower, Gen God, Lation Line 512, again for the hell of it. Steve Connell, it's 10 God, 10. Todd Kendricks, Jesus, Harvard Property Maintenance, Sharpie, The Lost, The Island, Haley's, Seattle, Scuba Steve Speaks, just get a drink, all right. Uh, J.R. Breen, Randy K, Farmer, Steve Collins, TCDR, we miss you, brother, Claire Killian, Wardrobe Farmer. Randy Grandy, Piff 1000, Ace Boob, 3223, Wake Up, Captain Freedom B, Puffer Smiles, 15 Digits. Oh, I know I'll get in trouble for that one. That one, too. 15 Digits, Mr. Ganja Moose, Hash, French Cheese, Super Bob, Groski 808, Weekend at Birdies, K Bag, Justin Stacey, Strong Style, Organic Zippy, iMedic 31, Honor C, K Hell, Me All Flower, Brent Boob, Kendrick, Todd Kendricks, Kendricks, Newton, K and T, Chris D, True Serum, Bow Towns, Fo, Daddy Dread, Barbara Matthews, Ancient Soul Grown. Kevin Jiu-Jitsu, Can of Health and Happiness, Berserk 215, Lab, Low Cuts. Come on, you two. Really? Low Cut, Amber Trembly, Mo Manic, Meds, Raz Benchy, Helen, Huge Anus, James T, Atomic Spoon, Miss Jill, Big Daddy, LT Gardens, Big High Flyer, 420, Lobster Brush Bowl, Mother Tree, Maine, Red Pill, Yo Boy, Roy Boy, Aesthetic, Shannon Gimmons, Ruhan, Rick W, Comfortably Numb, What Smoke Away, The 840 Show, Richard Lamb, for Red Pill, 710 again, Cannabis Pursuit, K Rolling Cree, Rolling Worthy Buzz, Logan Man 81, Oil and Flower Podcast, The Entourage Fetch, Warren Dixon, Pink Lady Luck, El Mondo 420, surrounded by Keith, Ferrari Farms, Fringe Dweller, Single Fathers, Happiness Without Guilt, Richard Forbes, Dan Pimenta, Before P Funk, Dix, Nick T, Richard Reach, Without What About Bob, Prince Patty, Daniel Bergman, Green Puff Man, Beat Dungley. James Chung, Sarge Gross, 818, John Wayne, call it Carolina Rude, Sister Golden Hair, Deanna L. Dankarino, K and F Garden, Blank 1030, Choose One, Only Feet, Faded Farmer James, Crypto Dope, Richard Lamb, HIP Grow, Matt LeJavine, Dan Marino, Two Chronic Wonders, Sunrise Grow, Top. Four, genetics, Mo Vision, Can2 Cannabis, Jess Fisher, My Dog Nelly, Rooster, Alex Hardy, Hardy Gear, One and the Same, Medic Cropper, Daniel Gross, Fart, Photos, Mitten Grown, Med, Sunrise Gross, Lexi, Brittany, and Coo, My Baby Girls, No Limit 916, Grumpy Toad, Alchemist, and Can of Minx, Soil Born, Soil Born Addiction, Ross, Joel, Alex, D, Dirty Ore, Catfish, High Power, Thunder Dan, Propagation Station, John McDaniels, Lisa Marie, Sarge Gross, 818, Blaze, Daily, Fried, Piper, Perpetual, Evil, Proud, Warrior, Serial Smiles for You, Franco, Sada, The Dank, Duchess, Kino, Kelly, Maxwell, Captain 420, Stink Fed, What About Bob again? Ill Jester 420, Papa Shrooms, John Gorski, Dugan Gangsta, THC4, PTSD, T Barrington, Honcho, Grown, Swamp Cat, B Best of Because, Mr. Randy D, Cannafari, Fo 20, AB Normal, Franklin Guerrero, Bearfeet, J Brent 74, CK Brown Guy 420, Pachyderm 420, Burning 
Tree Main, EA Gray Sun, Grow 207 Hydro Daily, Hemp with GG, Jamie Reen, Supreme Grape, uh, Stony Rockefeller, Caveman Cannabis, Brew City Synthetics. We're getting close, guys. Why Sustainable, Midnight Roots, Dead Cynics, Knuckles, Michael P, Polly Be Quick, Be Nimble, Bad Ke- or Bud Kilowatts, Michael D. 4889 dash or disbanded brothers, Massilium, Matt Joseph, Grace Mess or Grace Medicine RX, Keith and Chief, Hydro Daily again, Concerned American Cannabis 411, Freedom of Speech, Dr. Joints Worth, these trees, Ganja Suduko. Hopefully, I said that right. 710 is oil upside down, just Jesse. Steph, uh, Stevenson, I'm sorry, Jesse. Victoria, of course, you know who you are. What about Bob for the third time? What about Bob? What about Bob? Cheers to you, my friend. Last but not least, our good friend, Beatus207. Cheers to you, my brother. Just because you are last, you are always on my mind. Because you are not even on the list. How did I get muted? How did I get muted? Ah, when did that happen? Damn it. At least it was at the end. I don't know how it happened. But you guys, thank you very much for tuning in. I pretty much adjusted it. If this is the end of your day, please get some rest. If this is the beginning of your day, please have an amazing day. Moreover, please try to do something nice for somebody. We all need it at some point. If we're willing to admit it at, or not, it's so easy to do. Can I give you a hand? A little phone call, text. Are you okay, brother? Just wanted to say hi. Want to have a sesh? All that. All that counts. Just think of somebody you love. Have a great day. I look forward to seeing you tonight with Wally, Wookie, tonight at 11.30. I look forward to seeing you all tonight. Have a great day.